So Brooks, do you have a favorite major that you've won? Yes, the, the next one. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Okay, you're ready. He's ready. He's ready. He's ready. He's ready. On today's Pardon My Take, we have our U.S. Open preview with Max Homa and Brooks Kepka, all the boys on the show talking about the big golf tournament coming up this weekend. We also are going to crown two champions. The Denver Nuggets have won the NBA title, and the Las Vegas Golden Knights have won the Stanley Cup, a two for one. Yeah, big week for gold. Big week for gold. Uh, we are going to do Hot Seat, Cool Throne, and then Guys on Chicks. By the way, Mount Rushmore season starts on Friday officially, and we have some fun wrinkles to make it nice and spicy this year. Uh, we are brought to you by our friends at Premier Rugby Sevens. Premier Rugby Sevens is a new top-level professional rugby sevens league in the United States. Rugby Sevens is the most exciting game on the planet. 14 minutes long, unpredictable speed, scoring, excitement. If you love football, you'll love Sevens. PFT, you are going with Hank. Yeah, I'm going to be down in Austin this weekend. Can't wait. Going back to the old hometown, the old stomping grounds. The tournament's going to be awesome. I think I might be doing some uh, some broadcasting down there. Ooh. Either sidelines, maybe some halftime. Who knows? Who knows? Hell yes. How good is Rugby Sevens? It's very fun to watch in person. It's it's actually awesome. So if if you watch a game, it's over in about 15 minutes, including halftime. So it's just nonstop action. Okay. I like it. So uh, Rugby Sevens this weekend, weekend in Austin is a traveling circuit model across the U.S. focused on fan festival atmosphere with live music, beer, costumes, activities, party going uh, in the stands the whole time. Conference kickoffs this year starting in Austin. That's this weekend in Minneapolis. So franchise affiliation and teams are new city region focused around the U.S. with rivalries. Uh, partisanship starting. It's all going with Rugby Sevens. Premier Rugby Sevens is going to be incredible. So join PFT, Hank, and they're going to be at the Q2 Stadium in Austin, Texas on Saturday, June 17th for Premier Rugby Sevens Eastern Conference kickoff. We have a special deal for PMT listeners. Take 20% off tickets using promo code TRY. Go team, go use promo code TRY for 20% off tickets. We're going to say PFT. Give us one more Rugby Sevens. Get me pumped. I Well, I can't wait. So if you have ever thought about watching rugby in person, this is the perfect event to go to because it's going to be a party. Hell it's going to yes. be fun. If you like beer and you like tackling yes. and you like scoring and you like rapid fire games, it's, it's going to be great. Also, I think I might get on the field at some point, at least in training. Maybe try to tackle somebody. I think I'm I'm unretiring from rugby this weekend for the last time ever. One weekend only, I love will be it. unretiring. I love it. Okay, so Premier Rugby Sevens, PFT and Hank will be there in Austin this weekend uh, for the kickoff. Q2 Stadium. Use promo code PMT or sorry, promo code Try for all the PMT listeners. Promo code Try for twenty percent off tickets and go see Hank and PFT drinking beers, enjoying some uh, humans hitting each other. Nothing better. Nothing better. I'm rooting for the rugby team. For okay. the Texas rugby team. I like the name. I love it. I love it. Okay. Let's go. Welcome to Part of My Take. Today is Wednesday, June 14th, and the Denver Nuggets are NBA champions. The job is done. We can go home now. Yes. What a great, great acceptance speech by Jokic. Maybe the most Serbian thing ever. He's just like, okay, I'd like, in the words of Kevin Durant, uh, I don't want to be a star, go to work, go home. FaceTime my horses and hop in the pool. Yes, it was it was incredible watching Jokic uh, reach the the final boss. He is Finals MVP. He actually he when he was getting awarded the Finals MVP, he on the podium. He then picked up his daughter and just left the Finals MVP on the podium. Mm -hmm. And Bruce Brown, there's a clip of him just picking up, being like, "What do I do with this?" It's, it's Jokic, his now. I he was uh, so dominant, and then afterwards. Uh, basically was the most relatable guy ever where he's like, I'm just tired. I want to go home. They broke the news to him that he had a parade this Thursday and you, it would have like, you thought you had told him someone had died in his family. Cause he was just like, Oh, I can't go home yet. I can't go see my horses. He also had an all time quote, uh, where he said, uh, we succeeded in our jobs. We won the whole thing. It's an amazing feeling. But like I said before, it's not everything in the world. There's a bunch of things that I like to do. 
probably that's a normal thing. Nobody likes his job, or maybe they do. They're lying, but it's a good feeling. It's a good feeling to be the best at your job, even if you don't like it. Yeah. yeah. I think he, honestly, if he was, if I think he has a quote in the past where it's like, if he was just doing horses for his job, he probably would be dreaming about playing basketball. Instead, he's playing basketball for his job, dreaming about being with his horses. He just wants to look at horses. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they should fly his horses over. The horses should be in in the parade. I think we talked about that last week. Yes. They should pull the floats behind them, let Jokic ride behind his horses, take them down whatever the main avenue in Denver is, and let the, let the, let the fans celebrate. Now, Aaron Gordon had a completely yes. different reaction yes. than Jokic did, which was, I mean, he's been through a lot of shit in the NBA, a lot of people called him a bust. He was kind of thrown aside for a while. He is just so excited to be a champion. He joined the big celebration outside the ball arena and started partying with the fans afterwards. I could see it's like that old saying, like there are two wolves inside of each and every one of us. Mm -hmm. Those are the two wolves. It's like at one point you want to celebrate doing something great. On the other hand, you just kind of once you reach a certain age. And I imagine that Jokic lugging his body around all the time. He's tired. Is, he gets tired. Yeah. It's uh, everybody just wants to go home at some point, put on a movie and fall asleep in the first 20 minutes. Yeah. Of and he finished it. Mission accomplished. He uh, incredible, incredible playoffs. He averaged 30, 13 and a half and nine and a half assists. So. Uh, very close to a triple double average. He is the first player in NBA history to uh, lead the postseason in points, rebounds, and assists. Crazy! Like he was absolutely out of this world. Good deserves all the praise. He is the best player on the planet. I, I know that we do that every uh, after every NBA Finals. Well, he, We're like Embiid. whoever won it. Embiid won MVP. Yeah, Embiid did win MVP. Uh, he's probably very happy about that. But Jokic took that MVP. I don't even think he cared. No. But it, we, we can make the argument uh, he took that and he built himself off of it and he was like, I'm going to go win the thing that actually matters, uh, the NBA Finals, the NBA Finals MVP. He was so incredible. He also, and we'll talk about the whole game and and, and the and Jimmy Butler, which we have to bring up, uh, and B, er, Jokic I think now goes down as the best value pick in NBA history. Without a doubt. So he, I, I was looking through it. The mm, other deli. second rounders that you could that you could throw in the conversation, Jokic is better than all these guys. Uh, Draymond Green was a second rounder. Manu was a second rounder. Marc Gasol, Dennis Rodman, even though that was the 27th pick, so a little smaller of a league. And Ben Wallace was undrafted. And then if you want to actually do like value picks, uh, Kawhi was the 15th pick. Mm-hmm. John Stockton was 16, Kobe was 13, Carl Malone was 13, Tony Parker was 28th. And then if you even so so he's better, he's a better value than all these cuz he went uh 41st in the in, overall in the draft. The only ones you could make an argument for would be uh Steve Nash who went 15th, so that's obviously outside the lottery. He ended up winning a couple MVPs, and then Giannis is the other one who went 15th yeah. and won MVPs in a finals, but Jokic, it's it's clear he is the greatest value pick. In the history of the NBA. I actually disagree with that, Big Cat. You say Jordan three? Michael Jordan, yeah. pick yeah, third, o- pick third overall. Yes. I still yes. think Michael Jordan not being picked first overall yes. and what he did becoming the best player of all time, that's a better value pick at three. But Jokic, but, he can tell you what, if Jokic wins two more like I fully expect and demand that he does, I think that he would then surpass MJ on that list just in terms of value. It's crazy just because in the NBA, second round picks like the you're you're hope you're taking a flyer on a guy hoping he ends up like a lot of I would say the majority of second round picks don't end up on an NBA roster for more than a year at most. Like a lot of them don't even make the team. Jokic is the best player in the world and he was the 41st pick overall. It's I, it's a credit to there's one guy in the Nuggets facility. I would love to know his name. I'm sure diehard Nuggets fans know him. There's one guy who definitely saw Jokic first and spent like his life mission trying to convince everyone else in Denver being like, we have to draft this guy. Well, and that guy probably sucks at the rest of his job. Right. Because Jokic was not like nobody saw that in Jokic at the time. He well, no, pro- there's one guy who did. He, but he probably saw, and this is very relatable to anybody that's ever watched any sort of prospect at any age. And you see them do one awesome thing during a game that you happen to be tuned into. Yes. And then you can't get that out of your head for the rest of their career. And you wait for them to recapture that one play repeatedly and repeatedly and repeatedly so that you can be correct. There's probably he probably 
watched one game, saw one bit of footwork or a great like behind the head pass that he made, and said it's worth taking a flyer on this guy. And he happened to be right. You just described Tyrus Thomas' uh, run with LSU and Big Baby Davis jumping out of the rim, yep. out of the gym. Yep. And like this guy. Yep. How could he fail? That was a, that was a great team. Yeah, but I, the, I love those you're LSU right. Teams. Like those one moments where you you stick to it and you're like, man, this guy's incredible. And for Jokic, it turned out to be true. And he is, I. I get why uh, he's not a bigger star when you see his answers after winning the NBA title. He's just like, I want to go home. Uh, but I think it's very relatable. And he's very, like, even the way he talks about his teammates, and I know this is very cliche because this is like a hockey meme in real life, but, like, you never hear him saying I. He's talking about his teammates. He's giving his teammates all the credit, talking about how great Jamal Murray was, which he was phenomenal. And Jamal Murray gets like his entire path and all the injuries he went through and and everything to get back to this point. Coach Cal kind of off the hot seat for a minute cuz that is a yep, championship, that is for, championship Kentucky. Ring for him absolutely. But the whole the whole team is it's the it's the official death of super teams as well. Yeah. Can we declare that because no, they they out heat cultured heat culture. And we had uh we don't count the bubble year but 2019 the Raptors uh you could make the argument the Warriors, you know, without Kevin Durant getting injured the Warriors might win that title, but since the bubble, you had the Bucks, not a super team. You had last year the Warriors, who were different than what they were when they won all those titles, not a super team. And then this year, the Nuggets, mostly homegrown, super teams don't play anymore. We had a decade of super teams. It's over. Ring chasing is done. You got to build sorry, it the right way. Sorry, gold diggers. Yeah. The Nuggets are in town. Uh, fun little stat here in uh, in the modern NBA, and I'll just take this back to I think it's the Bulls. So the Bulls' first title run, um, the Nuggets are I believe that they are the uh, second biggest long shot to win the NBA championship. Ooh. You know who the first was, or who the longest shot was? Pistons. Well, so no, the Nuggets are not the second. I feel like I, they weren't that I long mis- of a I, shot. I, 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 I misspoke. They were plus eighteen hundred when the season started. Okay, um, but the biggest long shot in uh, we'll call it the common era here was the Golden State Warriors. Oh, in 2014, 2015. Yeah, they were plus twenty eight hundred. A shoot, a, a team with a jump shooting can't win a title. They can't. They Charles broke basketball. I, I hope. I hope that scouts now like the ping, the pendulum swings completely in the other way, and we have scouts over in Europe trying to draft like the least athletic fat guys. Yeah. And one it, one day they might blossom to the next Jokic. Now, we aren't saying this, but some people might say it, and we do discuss everything about sports. Some people are trying to put an asterisk because they had maybe the easiest path of all time. I think they were – I think if the Clippers had beaten the Suns, yeah. they would have had the easiest path – possible well, also the, for a one seed. The Celtics would have smoked this team. That's true. But finals. yeah, they played, I think it was a cumulative 27 uh, in seeding. 27 in seeding. So it was, you know, an eight seed in the Heat, yep. a seven seed in the Lakers, a uh, four seed in the Suns, and an eight seed in their first round matchup against the Timberwolves. I'm not saying this because I think the Nuggets would have beaten anyone. They were the best team this year. Mm-hmm. They have the best player in the world. Some are saying it. Now, credit to Skip Bayless, who will never stop fucking that chicken, but he said that if the Lakers had made it to the finals, they would have swept the Heat. Ooh. It would have been an easier matchup for the Lakers. So he also said Second that, place, LeBron. He said Embiid's a more physically imposing player. To like, to look at? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I, I, sure. would, I would probably That's nice. agree. But well, you can put that right next to his MVP. It's uh, it's actually a basketball game, though, and not just a physically imposing look-off. Yes. And which is Jokic, a, a key mistake a lot of pundits make. He's so much fun to watch. He's just the way he plays, how he gets everyone involved. He is the zone beater. They would just pass to him, and he just – he always – there's sometimes when Jokic, like, is – you want him to shoot more because mm-hmm. he'll make, like, the extra pass to a point where it's like, dude, just shoot it. You can shoot. You can you can make every shot. He was just out of this world good for the entire last two months. Yep. He deserves all the credit. Michael Malone, he was actually on the hot seat a year or two ago. He's now an NBA champion. Denver, first time ever. The Nuggets have won a uh, NBA championship. Or been in an NBA championship. Yeah, they were in an ABA, I believe. Uh, Stan Kroenke, GOAT owner. We, we were the first to say it, but he now has the Rams, the Avalanche, the Nuggets, and the Mammoth. And Arsenal being in first place three fourths of the season. Arsenal, I'm pretty sure, won the EPL. Yeah, so that, I stopped checking the table. He is he's the goat owner. He's won every title basically. Also, disres- you can win. it's disrespectful to the LA Gorillas who finished first place in Call of Duty. Oh, nice. Yeah. He owns them. 
Uh, yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Is that what you're about to say, Hank? No, that was not what I was about to say. Shout out to LAG. Um, Celtics in six? Celtics probably would have won in six, <laughs> but also this show has now lost five championships in a row. Yeah. That's tough. It's tough. So, Celtics, Phillies, Eagles. Eagles. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. Celtics, Phillies, Eagles, Heat, and potentially the Panthers. Damn. Wow. So, not over. The so four, four in a row. Well, about actually, and then all the way back to the Celtics. Oh, Celtics, you started it with Celtics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was because I was about to say it's, mm. it all coincides with when Max joined the show. Mm. <laughs> kind of interesting to think well, about. Well, Celtics that. were before. Yeah, kind so, of. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that's a bad run for us. It's a terrible run for us. You but, guys got to. But again, me and PFT are really, really carrying our weight here. Yeah, <laughs> I've, I've never lost a championship. Yep, neither have I. I haven't lost a championship in, in a show. while now. Feels pretty good to be a winner. It feels really good to be a winner. <laughs> we're such losers that we're actually bigger winners than you guys. Yeah. Are. How about that? And if I had the Firefest back in January where I accidentally bet them to win the championship and that ended yep. up cashing. So yeah. yeah. Huge, huge it just feels, accidents happen and it's just sometimes they work out. It just feels good to be right about something for a change. Like you know, it it so rarely happens in sports when you're correct about something and you see it coming. And you're not a total dumbass, so I, I'm not going to take a victory lap, but I will just say that I'm proud of my nuggets. I'm proud. I'm of not going to take a victory lap because I did a Firefest segment about how I was upset about how I accidentally put them to win the championship. Yeah, yeah. so it was an accident. Um, but it worked out. After the game, Jokic, you'll never see an NHL player do this, though, Big Cat. Mm. Uh, after the game was over, he went and he shook every opponent's hand wow. before he accepted Love the trophy. That. Never, never see a hockey player do that. Oh, we should also talk about Stan Kroenke just not understanding how a microphone works. Oh, yeah. No, he just was all he was. He was basically had his tongue in Lisa Salter's ear. Yeah, he was giving her in person <laughs> ASMR, just getting right in there. And it's unfortunate because his uh, the one thing that he's not the best in the world at owning is a toupee. Yeah, because that thing looks pretty bad. He also, especially from the side. It's also just a very funny visual when a team wins a championship and the owner gets to lift the trophy first, and it's like a bunch of insane athletes who we've watched go through these battles for the last couple of months, and then you have this old guy come and get all the credit, and mm-hmm. you're like, oh, okay, he has nothing. He has nothing in common with the rest of these people. This belongs to me. Yeah. He also got to hang out with Jeff Fisher for like. 12 years so he's that's very true. very cool guy that is true uh the nuggets went 16 and 4 yep in the playoffs just absolutely dominant and if you look at the roster i saw it when, when michael malone when he got on the mic after the game and he right after the game was over goes our work's not done we can win more yes like i want to win more he listens to the show he listened to the show they need to win at least three in order to be considered true champions in our book because they've got Jokic and aaron gordon who are both 27 Murray is 25 years old. Michael, Michael Porter Jr., who actually stepped up in the last game. Yeah, he did. After having a shitty series before that. He's Never taken a three in rhythm. He's 24. So they've got a good young core. And then um, Bruce Brown said after the game that he wants to stick around. Sometimes money isn't the most important thing. That sounds like a drunk thing to say after winning a championship. It also sounds after, like... When you win a championship, I bet you that's the last moment that your agent wants you to do contract negotiations. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking up Bruce Brown's contracts over the years, his total I, earnings, because it is also very easy to say that money's not the most important thing once you've made money. Yeah, right. That's uh, absolutely true. But, but yeah, yeah, it's it's that, that is, I would say, the last time that you want to, the last moment that you could pick in negotiating windows is right after a championship when everything is awesome. Okay, so he's made he's made $15 million, which is a good amount of so money. So he could use some money. A good amount of money, uh, but he probably could get paid a lot more money somewhere yes. else this offseason. Yes. So who knows what's going to happen with him. But the, the core is so young that, man, who knows? Multiple. Not five, not yeah. six, not seven. And shout out Christian Brown going back-to-back. Back. Yeah, back-to-back. Back, he joins the ranks of Bill Russell, mm-hmm. Magic Johnson. Mm-hmm. Who else? I don't know. That's probably it. Uh, Jake, it's I've probably got, one we're missing. I, it's obvious that people are going to be like, how could you forget this person? I've got a spin zone for you, Jake. Uh, I've got one too. Sorry about your heat. It's all right. I'm sorry that you had to go through that. Uh, however, Dame Lillard said that he wanted to go to whichever team did not win. The Ooh, NBA the reverse. Yep. Because he doesn't want to be seen oh, as no, a actually, chaser. Oh, no, actually, Kevin Durant did do that. He did. Yeah, he, he did he exactly did. that. He did. So yeah. he want, Dame wants to pull a KD. He... Uh, it kind of alluded to the fact that he would be okay with joining the Heat. So maybe maybe by losing this NBA Finals, you've given yourself an opportunity to get Dame Lillard and maybe get back to an NBA Finals. Yeah, listen, it's the most attractive free agent destination. So just come. 
Just come. Just come. There you go. I'm going to come. Quote card. I'm going to (laughs) come. Yep. Uh, So, Jake, the Heat lost. Uh, Jimmy Butler faded. Let's say that. He faded pretty bad. As good as he was in the Eastern Conference playoffs, he was just as bad. He was not good in the finals. That's going to suck if you're a Celtics fan watching that, huh? Yeah. Man, this guy just killed us. How off? How? Like, did you look up Caleb Martin and Gabe Vincent shooting this series? No, uh, I watched one game. Okay, all right. <laughs> and Max uh, Struess. Yeah. Yeah, none of them were good. <laughs> none of them were good. Yeah, the Heat kind of turned into a pumpkin. It's more credit to the Nuggets and their defense was, was they picked it up big time in the finals. But Jimmy ran out of gas. He had an incredible playoffs, but he just, like, even, even in game five, I don't know, with like maybe five minutes left. I think he had eight points or something. He went on a little bit of a tear he there. He like, like last 13. But yeah, besides last that, he was like two of 11 from the field or something. There, and, and despite Scott Foster's best efforts to extend the series, that foul that they called on Michael Porter the Jr. Three? Was it yeah. Porter or was it Aaron Gordon? Uh, he kicked Aaron Gordon in the ball. In the nuts, yeah. He got all ball on that one, and they, they called a foul. They reviewed it. I think everybody in America thought, okay, they're going to reverse this call because that's just Jimmy kicking somebody in the nuts. And then uh, it turns out that the guy in the replay booth was none other than Scott Foster. Mm-hmm. So Scott Foster, even though he wasn't on the court, he was uh, perhaps more impactful. So the uh, the Nuggets beat six guys. They beat six guys. They beat they beat the Heat. They beat Scott. Scott was trying to extend it. So this just proves our point that Scott Foster, he's washed. Yeah, he is washed. He, can't, he doesn't have the same impact. He tried on the game his that hardest, he but he couldn't do it. He couldn't get the job done, extending the series. But Jake, I, I do agree with you that the Heat. They're a great fit for a guy that you would want to be on the Heat. I think there are yeah. probably some players out there that are you know near the top of the list in the NBA that probably wouldn't want to go play in Miami because they do things like weigh you all the time, and that sucks. Right. But the kind of guy that you would want on the team would be somebody that would want that type of environment to go win a championship. So Yeah, we talk about on the show work-life balance. Work, you work, can have balance. fun. Work, work is what and we talk about. It's a great about. place to work. We do work, work balance around. Work, around work. Hank almost had to do work, work, and it was a scariest Miami's moment the of his perfect life. Perfect destination for that. Yeah, it is. Yeah, uh, I, I would like to see Dame play in Miami. I think he'd be a good fit on that team. Why not? Yeah, why not? But why not? Jimmy Butler probably hurt. I don't want to make excuses. I'm just going to say he, he sucked hurt, in the final. You shouldn't. You shouldn't be on the court if you're going to be. If, you're, if that's going to be an excuse, but we probably will get an update in a couple of weeks being mm-hmm. like, oh, Jimmy Butler turns out that he had eight ligaments torn in his ankle. And I, I still love Jimmy Butler. He's, uh, you know, I, I don't know if superstar, but he's a, he's in the star category, top yeah. 15 player. But if you. Yeah, about there. Yeah, yeah. If you if you say he's was so great in the Eastern Conference Finals, he deserves to get criticized for not being there in the finals. Definitely. That's part of the job. He had if they were to. Hang banners on best Eastern Conference playoff performances ever. He's probably number one. I think they should hang a ban- banner for that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he just put it right next to the MJ banner in Miami. Just dismantled. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just dismantled yeah. the Celtics. Yeah. Um, Absolutely owned them. But listen, two months ago, they were two minutes away of getting eliminated against the Bulls in the playing game. So I don't like how you're how you're dealing with this. I'm just saying. That's fine. Like, yeah, that's, yeah. I mean, it, did, not it was to be here. it was anticlimactic. Like it didn't. Yeah. It didn't feel like. Uh, they, they, I mean, they, they obviously the the game was in doubt with a minute left, but I don't think the series was ever in doubt. And Jimmy did say that he's not going to go to his Hall of Fame induction. Okay, so just that's a heads up. Okay, he doesn't care about that kind I, of stuff. I will cancel my hotel. Yep, yep. So you won't be there. He would have called you out as your number, his number one hater, number one hater, yes. motivator, hey, yes. Missouri marketing team. Yes, but uh, yeah, that's a wrap on the NBA Finals. And uh, oh, and shout out, Udonis Haslam, officially done. Officially done. I, mm-hmm. I won't believe it until I see it. Okay. I, I fully expect to see him on a roster. That'd actually. be great. I was gonna say shout out Mike Breen, but I guess I just am yep. a bigger fan of announcer than Jake is. Ooh. 100 NBA Finals games. Incredible. Yeah. Breen. Incredible. That, that was the real story. Yeah. Mike Breen, legend. Yeah. Uh, one last thing before we talk hockey. Uh, the quote that we saw it just passed our desk while we were recording. Nikola Jokic is the best guy ever because he said, uh, talking about the doubters, mm-hmm. the haters, of which there are many. They didn't believe in the fat boy. It seems like it worked out. Don't bet against the fat boy. Sounds like a recap of Oppenheimer. <laughs> it's, yeah, there you go. Nailed it. Put him. Uh, I might get this as a tattoo. It's a good tattoo. Don't bet against the fat boy. Just don't do it. Don't right do it. across my stomach. I, you know what? I'm going to say Jokic, not fat at all. Used to be. Used to be fat. He was, was the was, fat boy. Was fat, but fat. He had a glow up. Yeah. 
He he was the fat boy. Now and he's now, a little man. Yeah, now he's fucking awesome. He's a big, big man. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jake, uh, did you want to also say the wild? You had a, a crazy wild last night. You oh, say? yeah. There was a picture of Jokic when he was a kid. And Five? Wearing, yeah, he was wearing he's Denver fat Nuggets boy shirt. When he was a fat boy. He was wearing what? Denver Nuggets shirt. That's awesome. It and is wild. Cool. In Serbia? Yeah. To have like... Yeah. Like, not, what are the, the odds? He, yeah, he wasn't wearing like a Knicks big, or inter- Bulls big, big or... international brand. Right. Yeah. yeah. What was that like? Probably the Mat- Matumbo era? Uh, Maybe I was, Marcus Camby? Maybe probably too too early for Marcus Camby. Unfortunately, we got to remember that we're old. Yeah, we uh, are. So this was like 2000, 2001. So maybe Camby. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. That works. But either way. Birdman, man. Wild. wild. Shout out Birdman. Yeah. I it, it warmed my heart last night to see all the pictures of Birdman floating across the timeline. Yes, yes. The Nuggets are number one. All right. We have to crown another champion. The Las Vegas Golden Knights. Stanley Cup champions. Our Knights. Our Knights. We jumped on the bandwagon because Alec Martinez, who scored in this game, AWL. Uh, I mean, it's pretty crazy the fact that they've won a Stanley Cup. It they is. obviously went against your caps, but what? how long have they been a franchise? What, six that was, years? That was their first year. would have been uh, 2018. It's it's incredible. I mean, and to, to be into two, two Stanley Cup finals in that time, 2017 was when they founded. Uh, what a way to cement hockey in the desert. Yeah, and this is what the Coyotes never could do. And what a great, great city to win a Stanley Cup. Oh. They're going to have such a good time hanging out afterwards. You don't have to go to Vegas. You're already there. You're in Vegas already. I actually, I hope the Panthers score one more goal because that way we can say Alec Martinez, Stanley Cup winning, winning goal. goal. Yeah, because yeah. it's 6-1 right now uh, as we're taping it. We're calling it. We're call- The exit polls are in. Yep. The Las Vegas Golden Knights are your Stanley Cup champions. Incredible run. I think... Maybe Whitney, uh, Whitney might have said, "Watch out for the Knights before the playoffs." He started. took like every team. Yeah, he took every team, but I'm going to give him credit. Yeah, this is big win for the South. Big win for the South. Las Vegas, one of our biggest Southern markets. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's deep South. I love the golden jerseys that they wear. Yes, and th- they're jerseys that if they sucked, they would look completely awful. They would be like the worst jerseys in sports if they were not a good team. But because they're good in the golden jerseys, it's incredible. Yeah. So, uh, Jake, you're a double loser. Yeah, Max, how do you deal with this? Two? Yeah, well, you did. Max actually lost in the same day twice. So well, you at least. Back. Yeah, I know, but he, no, he lost two championships in the same day. You forget about the union. Oh, yeah, yeah. You forgot about the union. <laughs> Go work for Business union Insider. In, yeah. In so, Max, what, what's the move here? Uh, you know, you just kind of have to eat it for the rest of your life or the rest of your time on this show. Uh, you get, get called a loser every time you walk out, out the door, even though you did a lot of winning. Yeah. But it makes you no, feel no, 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 that's no, loser no, no, talk. No, no, that's loser talk. You guys are you guys are the biggest losers here. Uh hey Jake, did you get did you get shut out in the last game? No. Did you have any hits tonight? Let me see how many hits did the Panthers have they had any hits? Let's see. Looking up the box score right now. This is going to be big. <laughs> mhm. Yes, they've had hits tonight, so you okay. did not get no hit. Yeah. <laughs> That's nice. It's it's Thank tough, God. though. Double loser. You had a yeah. magical spring in South Florida and it yeah, comes to a screeching ACs. halt. But hey, second place is second place. You sound pretty down in your dumps. Yeah. Yeah. Was this a failure? No. Yeah. Eight seeds? You got to, you're, you're there to win a title. You're there to win a title. Yeah. You're there to win a title. I mean, I you, you have to go back and look and think to yourself yeah. the, the Bruins definitely would have beaten the Knights. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, if, if we actually, I'd say the, the biggest like takeaway from these playoffs is the Bruins Celtics would have won. Yeah, but the Heat and Panthers eliminated them. Right, but no, but I mean, but, look at the teams. You know. But <laughs> right, Hank, you want to have a guy off the Celtics? Yeah, Bruins lost so long ago that you don't. Even <laughs> it's tough to it's tough to make that argument. <laughs> that does feel like ten years ago. You were you're younger when they lost. It's true. That's true. Oh, wow, that is Time. true. Um, okay, so congrats to the Golden Knights. Uh, we're gonna try to maybe get someone on uh, from the team, Alec Martinez. If you're listening to this, you're probably not because you're probably drunk, having an awesome time with the Stanley Cup. But we will reach out and hopefully have him on for Friday's show. We're going to say, Billy, get something. Just wanted to promo some of our July 4th merch. Yes, good call, yeah. Billy. Uh, I'm rocking an amazing <laughs> July 4th t-shirt. It's uh, got Teddy Roosevelt on Allosaurus with a gun and a big stick, and it just says America. Like Is that a, a real photo? Yeah, that's a real it photo. It looks like okay. a T-Rex to me. No, no, it's an Allosaurus. Are you sure? Very different. 
Very different. Okay. I specifically asked for an Allosaurus. <laughs> All right. I think um, they just drew a T-Rex. Yeah, they they no, said Billy wants a T-Rex. Dude, Billy wants a T-Rex. Crest. Billy wants an You can tell by the crest. T-Rex. You can tell by the crest. No, that's a T-Rex. No, Allosaurus is just so much cooler. Teddy Roosevelt riding a T-Rex. What could be yeah, cooler than that? That is just... You America. would be a gatekeeping dinosaur guy. No, well, fucking PFT gate keeps planes. Yeah, because you don't know shit about. You planes, don't know Billy. shit about dinosaurs. <laughs> Tell me, Billy, your facts about planes are you do you are know shit fraudulent. about dinosaurs? No, you don't know anything about airplanes. Whatever, dude. You All thought right, an F twenty two? Dude, personally I grew out of I grew head. out of planes like in fifth grade. So you grew out of planes. I grew out of planes. Well, okay, that's, that's cool. Uh, what are you wearing, Max? I'm wearing the same thing as you. This is the our part of my take. You can see Mount. The back? Yep. Look at the back. Look at the back. Mount over Rushmore. There. Rushmore. The Mount Rushmore. The best shirt that blue. you can wear for Fourth of July. By far the best shirt you can wear for Fourth. They of really July. hooked it up with the facial hair on that Mount, Mount Rushmore, didn't yeah, they? Yeah. Stored up BarstoolSports.com. We have everything. There's some uh, cool like new uh, American flag jackets that look awesome. We got some new hats. Everything. So buy now because the summer's here. It's time for July Fourth. One of the best holidays on the calendar. So go to store.barstoolsports.com. Um, great reminder, Billy. Okay, let's do Hot Seat Cool Throne. Hot Seat Cool Throne is brought to you by our friends at Coors Light. Everyone thinks about the day they'll eventually get to retire and enjoy all the freedom that comes with it. But who says we have to wait decades before we get to kick back and chill out? Take advantage of that free will and spend the summer chilling like a retiree and pair those moments with Coors Light, the beer that's made to chill. It's a beer that's literally made to chill, pairs well with retired state of mind. The mountains on the bottles and cans even turn blue when your beer is cold, so you, so you know when it's time to grab another. We've been retweeting them, love seeing them. The Coors Light, the blue mountains on the cans and bottles. I see them and I get so excited, so tweet them at us. Perfect for all your summer plans or lack thereof. No judgment here. This summer, chill like you're retired with Coors Light. Get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with Drizzly or Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash take. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Coors Light is the beer of the summer. It's our favorite beer in the entire world. There's nothing better than cracking open an ice-cold Coors Light when it's hot out. Backyard, beach, tailgate, wherever you may be, Coors Light is the beer to drink this summer. Get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with Drizzly or Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com. Slash take. Okay, hot seat, cool throne. Hank. My hot seat is the Bills dynasty. Mm. Mm. Stefan Diggs. Uh, no showed for offseason training program. They asked McDermott about it, and he said he was concerned about it, very concerned about it, and he seemed very upset about the fact that yes. Stefan Diggs just no showed. So did he no show or did he show and then no showed? I believe he no showed. I, thought, he, he I thought that he showed up and then he just left. I think his agent said for the he was first there. time since Diggs joined the team in 2020, he skipped the entire offseason program. Okay. Was the article I read. Damn. Okay. Wait, now was that the article that you read or was that the headline that you read? This is from an article. Have the bills? It's a, it's a, is it a headline from an article? Nope. This is inside of the actual article. Okay. Which have the, was inside of a blog. Have the bills been in touch with Baby Diggs? Who's <laughs> that? He's Baby Gronk's rival. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, if you haven't seen highlight tape of Baby Diggs, it's electric. He's pretty much the most average-looking, like, eight-year-old boy just catching balls in his uh, front yard. Baby Gronk, Josie's a real stinky cologne. Baby Gronk, I'm calling you out. 1v1 me. I dare you. It's a parade inside my city, yeah. I like that. I want to see more. I want to see more baby athletes. I want to see. I want to see a baby Rodrigo Blankenship. Yeah, he just, <laughs> I think we should leave leave the little kids out. Of well, it. no, Baby Diggs wanted it. Baby Diggs called issue. him out. Baby Diggs called Baby Gronk out. It's when you say Baby Diggs, it sounds like you're saying Gronk, something else. Yeah. yeah. Confession: Diggs. I still have no idea who these guys are. It, I know you guys did a segment on it. I still don't understand their importance. That's probably good. That's a good thing that you don't. Yeah. Uh, you guys should. I mean, you should. Baby Diggs electric. I don't know what you're <laughs> yeah, no, with the FT. It's a little too close. Yeah. Baby Diggs? Yeah, yeah. baby. Look, <laughs> look, look, look at this Baby Diggs. Baby Diggs are electric. <laughs> um, we in one-on-one. Baby Diggs or Gronk? Or Baby Gronk? Gronk. In what, in what kind of drill? Uh, catching. Look, I'm going to show you a quick highlight of Baby Diggs. You give me your instant reaction. Okay. He's that electric. Let me see him. Let's see. Hold on. It's coming up. It's coming Is up. Is he watching? Confetti? There's Baby Diggs. Oh, I'd beat the shit out of him. No, baby digs. Yeah, no, I would, beast. I would beat him up. Monster. I would whomp him Look at this. You see him one handed catch in his front yard? Yeah, I'd smack him in the mouth. <laughs> well, big, big digs 
is owed oh, big dig. 24 big digs energy <laughs> he's owned 24 owed 24 million 2023 they're not gonna be able to trade him so they gotta make it work sounds like it's not working out no i'll be fine Mini I just camp. feel, you know, the Bills, uh, oh, unbelievable this Hank, run. This Hank getting his mm-hmm. AFC East. We're getting back to football. It's good to have football talk back. I, it's true, though. It's like, you know, and they have the Madden curse to worry about. Mm. Yeah, it's it's not an ideal situation that, you, that you'd that you want to have in Buffalo. And they have Aaron Rodgers. Maybe they're looking at uh, Hopkins. Mm-hmm. I, the Patriots to Hopkins rumors are, are buzzing. Which doesn't the whole make team is going to go to Hopkins. Any sense to me. If you were DeAndre Hopkins and you wanted to play with a great quarterback, why would you want to go play New England right now? Because Belichick is the best quarterback there is. Belichick is. He's a, he is? Okay. I think he's, as a quarterback, you think he's the best quarterback? He, yeah. What happened last year? They had a, a defensive bad quarterback. coach they, as their offensive coordinator. They had okay. a bad, who hired the defensive coach to be the, the best quarterback ever? Robert yeah. Kraft. Bill Maybe Belichick. this is why you shouldn't let quarterbacks hire their own offensive coordinators. Is Bill Belichick going to potentially play this year? He should. Best quarterback ever. I mean, yeah, it's a system. It's it's his system, and his system created the greatest. You so know. he's a system QB. Tom he's Brady a, is. No, Belichick's a system quarterback, too, because no, Belichick but, the head coach's system. But Belichick made the system? Did he create the system? Yes. As a system t- is, a sy- is the system sentient? Is the system taken over? Can he no longer control the system? No, it's his system. Okay. He runs a system. So he, he could turn off the system when he wants to. Yeah. Okay, you got to be. I mean, AI's in the news. You got to be careful. Probably should have tweaked the algorithm last year against the Raiders. Yeah. Remember I mean, that, that was yeah. Whatever. Okay, so Hank has buried the Bills. <laughs> no, I'm just saying they're on the hot seat. The Bills dynasty is on the hot seat. Okay, I think they'll be fine. Josh Allen Maybe has very mean how you that, say that. That's that's all I know is Josh <laughs> Allen says that's my fucking guy. Yeah, I've got his back through thick and through thin. I think they'll be fine. Diggs was t- was trashing him at the end of the last season too. It's it's tough to see. I feel bad. Love Josh. Love Bills Mafia. No, it's just, it doesn't sound like you do because you no, keep I, calling him a dynasty. They, I mean, they are the darlings. They are the they are the media darlings. They are the fan darlings. I think they were the the odds on favor last year. If not, then I do. They know, were odds on. Uh, no, I do know, odds on? No. Odds off? Uh, yeah, odds off. Odds on would be like they were minus one hundred to win the Super Bowl. I feel like they were. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then my cool throw, and I kind of, this could have been a hot seat, could have put dad and all the other, uh, big cat and all the other dads on the hot seat, but Peyton Hillis on the cool throne. Yes. Uh, he was on Good Morning America. Well, talking. I haven't had the chance yet. Hope that doesn't, that day doesn't come, but why would you put me on the hot seat for that? It's just a, t- it's a, he, he, so Peyton Hillis, uh, heroically rescued his son and his niece, uh, in, from, from drowning and had to get rushed to the hospital, had basically kidney failure from, going as hard as he could to to save the lives. Uh, almost, I mean, we talked about it when it happened, but it, he was in, like, critical condition when it happened. It's a yeah. crazy story. It's a crazy story. You should definitely watch it if you haven't. Uh, but he's he's made a recovery. He went on Good Morning America. He said that, I'm not a hero. I call myself a dad. Yeah. yeah. So that which, just... That, and, it, an, and uncle. Yeah. Do, I mean, like, because yeah. if you read the story, he had to swim past his son to save his niece first because he knew his niece was in more trouble and then come back and get his son. He might be number one uncle. He's a better uncle than he is a dad. Yeah. He's the number one uncle in the world. Mm-hmm. Also, that Hank, you just proved yourself wrong. Madden curse doesn't exist then. Mm-hmm. So Josh Allen will be fine. Peyton Hillis, who could forget his Madden cover? One of the best. Yeah, that, that still doesn't make any sense. What? That he was on the cover. Oh, no, you're gonna, you want a hero like him? that? He was unreal that one year. Yeah. I, yeah no, he, I mean, well Didn't deserved. he beat the Patriots? Yeah. On the on the, what? Yeah, on the Browns. On, it, in the regular season. The yeah, regular in the regular season with who cares, Billy. Billy. That, you're walking into one like Billy. With that. <laughs> who that's gives tough. a that's, fuck? That's, I'm ju- it's like, a big hey, deal. Did we beat it's a you in the big regular deal season? to beat the Patriots for any AFC team that doesn't have much playoff success. Hang the banner. What year was that? It, it was the off year. 2011 it was one without Brady. Yes. Matt Castle. All right, but yeah, uh, great story. Shout out to Payne Hillis, hero, dad. Mm-hmm. Hero dad. Hero dad. Hero and dad. uncle. Yep. All right, PFT. Uh, my hot seat is Buckingham Palace Guards. Oh, yeah. You see the videos of Buckingham Palace Guards training? They've got, like, instruments and shit that they're playing. And they've had multiple members of the Buckingham Palace Guards uh, just pass out in the hot weather, which is, if you're a British person, you shouldn't be out in the sun to begin with. But they make these guys stand out in the sun 
with what looks like a, a live raccoon on their heads and then wearing their 1776 throwbacks on their bodies that just trap in all the heat. And so these dudes that just keep passing out and the band just walks around them and keeps playing. That's that's football guy mentality right there. I got to say, though, 86 degrees is not that hot. In Britain, it is, though. You have to, you have to judge it on a sliding Still, though, scale. Any, on. Anything above over 60 degrees in England is, is boiling hot. Yeah, I mean, it also it just added to the effect that he was, uh, you know, he had a trombone. That is the saddest instrument. Yeah. Uh, just the whole thing was perfect. As he was passing out, you think he did the wah, wah. Yeah. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. Uh, and then my cool throne is Conor McGregor. Ooh. Conor McGregor is on the cool throne. I, I can't believe we didn't talk about this after the last game. But he was brought out onto the court at the Heat game. He was sitting courtside, and they brought him out to do some sort of a stunt, like a fake fight with Bernie. Is that the Heat mascot name? Yes. Bernie. And uh, part of the stunt was, okay, Connor, you're going to hit the mascot in the face, and then he's going to fall down. McGregor, like, hauled off and jacked him up in his chin, Mm -hmm. knocked him out, and then went and finished him off, like on top of him, landed at least one more clean shot to the face. Sent the mascot to the ER. Yeah. The guy actually had to go to the ER. He's so got his power back. He, yeah, he's got his power back. McGregor is officially back. I yeah. can't wait to see him step into any ring. A win's a win. A win's a win. He needed a win. Big he needed time. a win. And, uh, one, and one, 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 like what, like three second KO? Yeah, and his old foe, Floyd Mayweather, is probably going to be looking for a different opponent because he's got the Gotti family yeah, after him. Yeah, the Gotti's now, are coming after which, him. Which, uh, respect. 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 To Bernie would have been back for game six if there is one. So oh, oh I like that, check. Bernie would have uh, won. great update. <laughs> Bernie would have won. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. I have two hot seats. My first is for uh, loser simps like Jake Marsh who think Roger Federer is the best of all time. He is, in fact, not. Djokovic won the French Open. He has 23 majors. Majors? Grand Slams. Grand majors. Slams. Yeah. He has 23 Grand Slams. He is the greatest tennis player of all time. I watched uh, over two games of the match. Mm-hmm. Um, sets. No, games. no, I watched games. There's games I inside. I, I watched points. Games, three games sets, in the match. last set. Over two games in, in the match. Uh, he is the greatest of all time. What a week for Serbia. Back-to-back yeah. days. Great. They have the best basketball player, the best tennis player. So Serbia or Denver? Where would you rather be right now? Serbia. Sir, yeah. He's, That's why he wants to get home. Although, yeah, Serbia. It's like, fucking what, popping in Serbia. Once the Serbs start, they feel themselves a little bit, a lot of bad shit usually happens. Yeah, they have the root off. of... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, what do you... I hope they don't have a parade in Serbia. Yeah. It doesn't what, go well. Uh, what, what are you thinking, uh, Jake? You, you, you speak for all the loser simp, limp dick, Federer fans. Uh, you don't have a goat. That's crazy that you asked for a picture with the loser simp. Yeah, and I whispered to him. I said, "Hey, <laughs> fucking Djokovic owns you, bitch." Yeah, not much of a debate anymore. However, Rafa wasn't in this, and this is his tournament. Who gives a fuck? This Rafa just wins play. all the French Opens. Exactly. That's the other thing. Uh, I think I think Djokovic is uh, the first to win each major Grand Slam major uh, 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 three times or more. That's impressive. No one else has done that. So he has. That's, that's he can wild. win on any any surface. Any time, and he had at least two or three taken away from him because of his COVID vaccination status. Mm-hmm. So he is. We're going for thirty. We're gonna we're gonna go for thirty. They should introduce a new surface to tennis. What do you, what do you think about so this? We have hard clay and grass. Marshmallow hard clay, gra- grass. I was gonna say ice. Oh, I like that. I ice, saw a video. There was like a viral a TikTok of like uh, yeah, you have a puck ice and then pickleball, and then there's six guys on each team. Yeah, there was like people playing and the pickleball. Net is, on the ice. net's behind the players yeah. instead of in front. I like no, but that. can you imagine? Shoot whatever they have, like bouncy ball. Like racquetball material. Yeah. yeah. Ice tennis would be fucking Trampoline awesome. Trampoline tennis. Put them, put them on skates. Yeah. Either Connor, way. Conor McGregor would be so good at ice tennis. Djokovic yeah. is uh, the GOAT. He is the GOAT. And yep. and sad boys like you just crying in your series. Oh, yeah. Oh. You're fine. You were crying all Sunday when he won. You're right. He's the best of all time. There's no debate. He is uh, the greatest. And I can't wait to win more. I... PFT was saying with the Nuggets, I, I've been a Djokovic fan for my entire life. I've watched every single uh, game set, Point. no game that he's been in. Uh, and it feels good to be vindicated that I was right all along. Congratulations. Djokovic. I feel like I won a major. You kind of did. Yeah. It did. Uh, my other hot seat is Hank. He's 30. Happy birthday, Hank. Happy mm. birthday, Hank. Hank, Hank, happy birthday. He's 30 guys. years old. Damn. I've known him since he was 19. He is... 
a gr- I've always said that when you turn 30, I will f- officially feel old. Turns out I f- officially felt old like five years ago. Uh, but 30, Hank. Yeah, uh, it feels really old. Uh, something about the, you know 30 between 29 and 28, it just feels significantly older than those numbers. Uh, I had a flight back from Chicago this morning. I was listening to the Life episode, and that was that was really hitting home. Just talking about you know your twenties and your thirties. I kind of I kind of hope that I'm in the Mark Titus territory where my twenties were my thirties, and my thirties are more like my twenties. Wait, so but your twenties were like your twenties. I know your twenties. Yeah, but like you were not you were not living your twenties like you were your, in your thirties. This is whole like game six is really game seven. Well, no, he's basically saying he wants to have Mark Titus's life, but skipping the part where. Titus said that he spent his 20s trying to grow up too fast. Hank spent his 20s trying to get younger, and now he's going to go to the 30s and try to relive the 20s. Mm. I like the strategy. I, I You should do that, but that's not what Mark Titus did. I think maybe your 20s were more like your teens. Yeah. And now your 30s are going to be like your 20s. Mm-hmm. Well, but even you guys were talking about, I mean, I guess, yeah, I don't know. It, it's tough with this job because this job obviously is the greatest job in the world. But, like, but it's a job. You'd rather be with your horses in Serbia. Yeah, and like you know, you guys talked about like just having a job where you can like fuck off. Like that's obviously never really been the case here per se. Um, but yeah, I, I'm. I appreciate all the birthday wishes. I'm excited for. I'm excited for Chicago. I'm excited for for the 30s. You know, I just. I've always felt you know immature and, and young for my age, and working at Barcel has always been like, yeah, well, you don't have to grow up because you're working at Barcel. But yeah. I was like, you're 30. We are kind of like the lost boys. You can't really act like I guess you can, but it just feels it just feels different. 30 30 30s hit me in the face pretty hard. 30 dirty yeah. and flirty. Yeah. There you go. The Henry Lockwood story. I, I don't know if this applies to how you're feeling, Hank. I I 30 did. just seems ancient. Like even at the golf course when it's I see not. when I see mm-hmm. old guys like when you see, you know, old guys in golf stuff and and you're like, "Oh, those guys are those guys are dinosaurs." Now I'm like, "Oh, like that seems like fun. These like they're they're living the life." Yeah. Yeah. When when I was twenty eight and twenty nine, I spent those years like dreading turning thirty. Yeah. Yes. And then once I turned thirty, I was like, "Oh, this isn't bad at all," because I just spent the last two years worrying about being thirty. It turns out I feel the same. And you get that, young you, again. Yeah, you'll get young again. It'll yeah. be it'll be okay. Although it, Billy brought this up earlier, and it's kind of crazy. Hank was Billy's age when he started doing part of my take. How about oh. that? Mm. I was younger. Yeah. Wild. No, when I met Hank, Hank was my age. I was 22 when this podcast started. Damn. Whoa. That's crazy, bro. Wild. Well, I'm happy for you because you have grown up to be a man. I don't, not, not a responsible man, but a man. Corporate Hank. Yeah, corporate Hank. Your lights did just get turned off because you didn't know how to get a utility bill, but that's whatever. Yeah, I mean, listen, I got to be a little bit more proactive. Uh, you know, I've made some bad decisions in my 20s. I'm going to try and limit those in my 30s, uh, do my best. <laughs> but, you know, you can't win them all. I'm you're excited gonna, for your 30s. You're going to pop off in your 30s. Yeah, we're going to kill it. We're going to kill it in Chicago. Yeah. Huge decade. Yeah. Play a lot of golf. Play a lot of golf. What's crazy is that if you think about time, when part of my take started, Hank was, it was, it was closer to being when we killed Osama bin Laden. Mm. Then part of my take is to right now. Yeah. How about that? It's true. I feel like I am the age when you guys started. Like, I still, I, I'm still ready to grind. Like, I, when I think about oh, yeah. Yeah. your guys' is, uh, when you guys started in, in this career, you were around my age I am now, and, and you went hard for like five or six years. Like, I'm still ready for that. And then I'm we still, just gave I, up. Yeah, yeah we that, gave was up. Nice. that was well, nice. Well, no, I'm saying, I'm saying, <laughs> even, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about like, <laughs> we grind. Uh, it's, <laughs> I want to say something stupid. Yeah, you are. Right, yeah, we work stupid. harder than you, Billy. No, I think it's a lot easier to work hard when you're your age. Okay. I would love for you to explain <laughs> that to someone who has three kids at home that has to be home all the time. Yeah, I, I said it was going to be stupid. Yeah, okay. All right. Oh, it yeah, was. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Because <laughs> but Hank, I'll say it's significantly harder. Because he's like, I'm 30. I'm ready to grind. Your uh, your life is officially started. I think maybe at twenty two, maybe Billy, because you want to go out. Maybe I could see the argument, but I would still take having no responsibilities outside of work. Uh, definitely leads to being able to work more. No, definitely, definitely stupid. What I said. Yeah, yeah. No, I think what you're saying is that it's uh, it's it's more fun to go out and get drunk, right? And you have to sacrifice some of that. In your 20s. Correct. And in your 30s, you don't want to go out and get drunk that much. Right. And I think when you get older, you just don't care as much about, like, the 
I don't know, like a, you you don't care about what your peers think. You don't care about right. like what's going on around you. Like I'm just gonna do what I like to do, which is golf. Which is golf, <laughs> yeah, I mean, pretty much. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I appreciate the birthday wishes. Did you almost say when you get to your 30s, you just stop caring about your appearance, like you guys? Is that what you? were? No, I'm saying like I don't know when you're you know you 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 get self conscious. I feel like when you're in your younger twenties, no, you you're like oh what are what are my peers yeah. doing or like yeah. you know you're you're trying to appear a certain way, you're trying to like come off as like cool or whatever, and it's like I don't care about that anymore. I just want to like wanna do work. what I want to do. Mm-hmm. Hank, grind is, and Hank is so old now that when he started this podcast, he was Harambe was still alive. Oh my god, twenty two. Also, when we started this podcast, Harambe was still alive. Yeah, no, but Hank especially. But Hank really, Hank was hot. <laughs> <were you, laughs> No, you guys are both above thirty when we started. Thirty one, yeah. I think. We did we we celebrated our thirtieth birthday together. Yeah, true. In Arizona. Yeah. And I I I thought you were so old. That 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 one that one that that's the thing. That you like I guess put what me it is. Pasture, it's kinda like when it like when you're, you know, in middle school, kids that are seniors in high school seem like they're super, super, super old. And then you're a senior in high school and the kids that are in college seem like they're super, 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 super old. When I was 22, going to that 30th birthday party, I was like, "Damn, these guys are going hard for 30 year olds." Like, the other thing is, they're old as fuck. Yeah, and now, and now I'm that old, mm-hmm. and I like realize how the young people look at me, and I'm like, "Damn, like I am not a kid anymore." That's that's where it's like acting like a kid and being immature. It's like you're fucking 30, dude. And mm-hmm. as you, the older you get, the uh, less like age ma- Like I consider us kind of the same age now. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like a yeah. 22, like Billy's a lot younger than us. But anyone over 30, it's like. Yeah, you could be friends with a 30-year-old. Like, that's not... That's totally normal. Yeah. Well, I'm excited for you. All right, my cool throne is Fat Randy. He's back. He's trying out for the Broncos. That Love it. it. Yeah. The world needs more Fat yeah. Randy. Uh, Billy. Yes. It wasn't that stupid. Because I get what you're saying. You want to party. Also, but I would like... I would say that if I had no responsibility, I would, I would be able to work significantly more. Although I still work a lot. So it's... But it... I get what you're saying. It's not that stupid. It, but it's like I from you your point of view, more. I could yeah. totally see like, oh, that's like no, no, it's not that. It could be more spontaneous. No, it's, like, it's like Billy's personal sacrifices are so occasionally not getting drunk on a Thursday night. Yeah, that's and huge. that's that's your service. That's that's, no, that's your I, I, This sounds really bad. No, no that's, that's huge. I know, no, but that's like huge. it's you storm in the beach every every Thursday yes. night that you have to work in the office until eleven forty five at night. That's no. your your troop. No, no, that's not what I'm saying. Like I don't know. Like Never. right now we're taking like you're, this. you're like you got like you have your kids and like when you go to work you're like I gotta do this because it's not just for me, so that nah, you go I hard as I fuck. Don't think, I don't think like that. I'm hoping that kicks in one day. Got it. Mm-hmm. Well, you'd have to higher have power. Yeah, a kid okay. first. Yeah, it's. I said it was stupid. Okay, it's true. Um, like, come on. No, I, I didn't think it was as stupid. And the more I think about it, all right, Bill, your hot seat, cool throne. Uh, my hot seat is. I think you guys. We, we touched on it a little, but Baby Gronk's dad. A video got posted yeah, of bad. him. Really bad. Dad Joe. Really it's just bad. Re- really sad. Mm-hmm. Kind of. I uh, hope. Ba- I hope. I hope Baby Gronk. Uh, at least makes it to D three football, which leads me to my next hot seat. I hope Baby Gronk beats the fuck out of his dad. Yeah, yeah. that would be awesome. Uh, but hopefully he has success because I mean that yeah, puts a lot of pressure it on you. Veer, feels very exploitative at this point with Baby Gronk's dad. If you didn't see we're it, there a it. video got leaked. Uh, where what? We're part of it. Yeah, no, we are part of it. Doesn't feel exploitative with Baby Dicks. He's my guy. <laughs> <laughs> Love Baby Dicks. I will pump up Baby Dicks. You can't exploit Baby get, Baby Dicks. <laughs> no. Um, but basically- I want Baby Dicks around me all the time. <laughs> Give me all the videos of baby dicks. <laughs> wait till you see him. He's electric. It's a parade inside my city. Yeah. I all can't right. wait. Uh, but basically, uh, he's in an interview with a podcast, and the podcasters are asking Baby Gronk questions, and then Baby Gronk's dad keeps stopping him and telling him to repeat what he says and re-ask the question. It's uh, pretty it was, bad. Yeah. It was mm-hmm. bad. Uh, my was other bad. hot seat is D3 football. Uh, our boss uh, said that playing D3 football is crazy, pointless, and just like, you know, he did. If you want to play D3 football, go do it. It's very rewarding. I actually am reaping more of the benefits of D3 football now than I was when I was actually playing it. How? Just like you, like your friend group, the guys you meet and play with. That's college. Yeah. But, <laughs> <laughs> no, but just I think we got okay. we. I think we got, got college friends. What about what about I, I? I understood. So Dave, Dave was saying that like. <laughs> 
He wasn't saying all D three sports. He said baseball, he was soccer. His argument, I was but there football, for football. We yeah, the the it, physical toll that you yeah, have to go the, through yeah. to play D three football is a lot. Yeah, the amount you have to put in for the reward is is not worth it. Thoughts. Is what his argument was. Thoughts, uh, like maybe like not even having a playoffs. Yeah, if you yeah. make it kind of pointless. Yeah. If you not like, being able to talk to you know the, the podcast you're on. You when you cutting off all communication. The funny thing is that when you're out out of it, you forget how bad the grind was, and you remember the great times. And reminiscing on those makes mm-hmm. it all worth it. Yeah, especially yeah, you, when you're sitting around with your buddies. I know it's probably just a college thing, but you're like, "Yo, remember when like you know, Bobby lit up this dude?" Or like, and you just like talk about random shit. No, and, like I, it makes I, it all like worth it. Murals, I, yeah. I know. I, I actually no. agree with Billy. Like group suffer, suffering through some bullshit all together as a group for sure makes you way way closer with those people that you all went through that shit with together and this is probably just because it was my experience and like we think that it's much more uh, fulfilling than like getting hazed with your frat brothers but like frat brothers probably think it's much more fulfilling to do that stuff because it was cooler it's at, to each their own but at the same time at the end of it you walk away with like you know you, you don't you get it you get it yeah those I will was, be your best friends for life when I was watching that clip, I was thinking about how mad you were. Oh yeah. When when no, it inevitably I, came out. No, reading is just like he he doesn't get it. It's it's fine. He doesn't, doesn't understand the glory. He doesn't. He does, yeah, he doesn't understand the ups and downs of high school football. Man in the arena. <laughs> in D three football. Yeah. <laughs> That's a movie quote. Okay, got it. But it was it was sick. Yeah. Definitely. You know, if you're looking for it, reach out to. Uh, so you, you would know. do it again and not go D one and try and walk on at a bigger school. That was just more not fun. Lane, no, way because more fun and way because more I would end up. I would if I tried walking on a D one, I'd see D one parties and be like, "Oh shit, why am I doing this?" And I, I wouldn't end up doing it. So D three football is actually better than D one football. Yes, in terms of molding young men. Probably. No, this is kind of like when I'm like, uh, "Oh, I would never have wanted to go to college in like a warm weather climate." Like, who would want to do that? Yeah. Deep down, I know that's fucking bullshit. Yeah. Builds character. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, and then uh, Drikas Duplessis is totally gonna get fucked up by Israel Adesanya because he was talking some crazy shit about being the only African fighter in the UFC, and Israel Adesanya is like pissed off as fuck, and he wants to manifest killing him in the ring. Whoa! It's pretty crazy. Okay. I'll be watching. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in my cool throne is Aaron Rodgers because Zach Wilson hasn't made his life hell uh, on the field. So that that's good to hear as a Jets fan. Has he, but has he made it heaven off the field? Uh, the verdict's still out. Okay. Okay, Jake, finish us off. My hot seat's Oakland A's ownership. So Tuesday night, oh. the fans of Oakland are planning a reverse boycott at the stadium. So instead of not going to the game, they're actually all going to go to the game and try to pack the Coliseum. They also have won... Six in a row, and the Royals have lost seven in a row, so they're now tied with the least amount Let's of wins go. in the league. Mm. So we stand coming out with a good Oakland. time. Yeah, fuck I, John Fisher. So it's going to yep. be a rowdy environment in Oakland tonight. So I, I I understand the thing that they're trying to do, which is we want to show in force that we're still like a committed fan base, despite what our owner's trying to do to us. At the end of the day, though, you're also giving them money, right? Yeah. But I, I get it. I get it. Because... Oakland has been the butt of a lot of people's jokes when it comes to like the possum that lives in the stadium or whatever. Um, and a lot of stuff like that. But they still do have fans. Dude, Baby Diggs is terrible. Baby Diggs is a <laughs> fucking Baby, electric. This video is horrible. Dude, he makes those one hand catches. <laughs> is that what size Baby Diggs is usually or is it cold? He is, he is not <laughs> he's not gonna be good. Yeah, so they were twelve and fifty, but they've won six in a row now they're eighteen and fifty. Let's go. And yeah. Fuck John Fisher. Tuesday night will be crazy. We stand um, with Oakland. Dude. My cool throw on this would have been a Monday topic as well, but John Sterling. Yeah. Got hit by a foul ball and just kept it going. Your hero. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Just so grit. Speechless. Perseverance. Oh, not great Professionalism. Eyesight. No. Well, he's had trouble with home run calls, so yeah. can't really see where the ball. He can't track the ball very well. Stantonian. Yeah. Yeah. But okay. that was really impressive that he just kept going. He's like Zach Campbell. It was, yeah. Zach Campbell does that all the time. I'm surprised he okay. didn't come up, go up to the booth and try to snatch the that ball. That would have been ball. awesome if Zach Campbell had, had stuck his glove out in front of John Sterling. It's like in a fever pitch, from. right? Doesn't Drew got Barrymore it. get hit? And Jimmy Fallon's like, I got it. Yeah. Yeah. Zach Great movie. Everywhere. Yeah. Um, okay. Good job, everyone. Let's do our U.S. Open preview. Yeah. Before we get to the U.S. Open preview, I want to talk to you about our great. Great friends over at Duracell. I actually just bought a bunch of Duracell batteries the other week. I was getting an apartment all stocked up for my mom. Went out to the store, bought batteries. 
The only kind I even considered by the only kind I looked at actually was Duracell. I won't even look at the other guns. Duracell has the best standards that are, uh, that are actually sponsoring Williams Racing. And you guys know that few sports are more technically demanding than auto racing. And Williams Racing only trusts one brand of disposable va- batteries, and that's Duracell. You may not think that you need the same batteries that help power Williams Racing until you do. That's because Duracell is engineered for more and a proud partner of Williams Racing and of part of my take. You can learn more at Duracell.com. Check out Duracell.com. But really, if you're shopping for batteries, there's only one option. It's the Copper Top. You better bring Duracells. You better come correct. The best the best batteries for remotes in the game. These batteries will last you so long. Love Duracell. Love that they're working with us at Part of My Take and Williams Racing. And now, here's Max Homa. Okay, we now welcome on our very, very good friend, Max Homa. And if you hear that noise... His son Cam is joining us as well. Probably the youngest guest we've ever had on the show. God, I'd hope so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's true. That's true. I, I would mean, absolutely hope so. Yeah, you probably have been able to hear my my son scream. Oh, it, it already flipped over. My son scream in the background in some of the zooms we do, but it's uh, it's up there. So Max is on. He's getting ready for the U.S. Open at his home course. Is it technically your home course? Let's start there. Not even, not even remotely. I played a golf tournament here in college, and everyone's like, "Oh, he's the favorite to win," because I, I won the Pac-12s here. But uh, I, I've only played the course a few times. Um, yeah, I mean, it's in my, it's in my hometown, but it's not. Uh, it's absolutely not my home course. This place is far too uh, exclusive for uh, someone like me. So it is your home course. Yeah, and it's your you, home course. You shot, and by the way, you you're not a, the favorite. You just shot so you know a sixty-one there in college, right? <laughs> I did, yeah. So, I mean, that to me, that screams everything. This is setting up for Max Homer's coming out party. I mean, listen, uh, I will take all of the good vibes I could possibly get. The major season has not been kind to me yet again. Uh, so I'll take I'll take all of it. Um, if I need to say that this is my home course, then I'll I'll say it. Uh, but yeah, I've just set the record straight. Uh, it is twenty miles from my house. Uh, but far from my home golf course. Okay, so let's let's uh, let's work on this majors thing because I I did want to bring it up. Yeah, and, give me something, man. Well, you you, something. you brought it up, so I feel good, you know, being able to discuss it. Um, why do you suck in the majors? I, I think I'm starting to put my uh, finger on it. Um, I treat uh, I treat them all the same, but I, I even noticed it today. I started to get hey. This is funny that I asked that in front of your son. Yeah, but yeah. Your son, is, your son is quite literally being a human shield yeah, for you right now. Yeah, I'm, I, we're gonna I, know, be I thought so if nice. I did this today, I could, you guys couldn't be too mean. Um, no, I, I, you could, I could just tell I'm like more anxious, trying too hard, all the things I guess you'd hear in the uh, other sports where you know you get to the playoffs and it's just like a. Uh, I, I, it's not it's not a mental block it's like i know what i'm doing but i just feel more like high strung more wound up instead of just playing golf and i noticed after after the uh after the pga you know i went to dallas for the fort worth for the colonial the charles schwab and i got eighth or ninth and i just felt like i was playing golf uh didn't feel like anything special and at the pga i'm trying so hard never to make a mistake so i think that that's it but uh i know it's not my golf game um but man, to be to be determined. So we need to do like a Hoosiers thing with you, like the hoop is ten feet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you know, so the holes four point whatever inches wide. They haven't changed it on us. Yeah, holes a hole. You know man. how to get in a hole. That's all we got to say. You you got to like look. You you were born to get inside holes. <laughs> I mean, one time at least. <laughs> 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 that's great no but you're you've got perspective right now i mean this is it's taking place the the sunday is going to be on father's day you've got your son right there this is all lining up for perspective city for max homa yes well i i was gonna i was gonna say to you pft because i know uh, your son um always comes in and gives and tells you nice nice interesting things but yeah. um my my son uh, put a little pressure on me because he said, "Daddy, uh, my seven month old." Da- he came in the room yesterday uh, after he opened the door and he said, "Daddy, um, you know, I I, w- I want to get you a Father's Day gift, but the best Father's Day gift you could get is winning the U.S. Open." And I, you know, it put a little pressure on me, uh, but I know he means it. Uh, I know he can't. 
I, I know he can't leave me as a son, so he's kind of stuck. But I think he wants his dad to be a, a winner. Yeah, uh, and I just got to give that to him. So I'm I'm glad that he's here, giving me a, not only perspective but pressure. That's great. Yeah, a little motivation. Now, it, it, does he does he also? Because my son Chris was saying the other day that Max Homa could never train hard enough to be a member of Smash GC on the live tour that you don't have oh you saw you saw that story yeah so so maybe maybe you can explain it. i guess um who, who was it that's no longer on smash smash golf club but i guess he wasn't working out hard enough for uh to vibe with brooks matt wolf is no longer on i've, I've only heard this through rumors but apparently there was some rigorous workout and everyone was sore except brooks because he's a beast <laughs> and uh, I guess Matt didn't want to do it anymore. Or I don't know. Brooks didn't want him to. I don't really know. But man, there were a couple of stories. I, I laughed real hard <laughs> at the way people told them. Yeah. Um, but who knows? I wish, you know, like all, all the, the, the live PJ tour stuff aside, I wish some of this was more public because, you know, in a, in a league where they have teams like that, like a normal sport, I mean, we get we get those stories like Lakers have all kinds of those stories. You know, we got Pat Beverly doing funny stuff. We, they, someone was doing something on Twitter the other day where they said this is the funniest NBA season ever. And there's the part where Westbrook, after like the motivational speech, is like, let's just have fun, guys. Like, let's have fun. That's what this is about. And everyone's amused. So I wish some of this stuff on, on that tour would come out because I do think it's interesting and funny. I mean, this this thing that happened with Matt leaving Smash, I mean, it was – that's entertainment, and yeah. like I, it's not, it doesn't make anybody like look bad. It's just part of the game. We're golfers, man. We are not, it, we're not team driven people. And yeah, I can see how that would be a problem. It's the only like team golf doesn't work in my mind. But the only way that it could work is if you have like infighting and this league stuff happen, and you can you know everyone can get exactly. in on the intrigue. Exactly, because if you think about like. NBA offseason rules sports like it actually might be more interesting than the sport for the first like 70 games and golf all of a sudden in the last year and a half has become like it's got the, it's got the fire it's got the juice so I lean into that because we have very little interesting off golf course things happen ever. Yeah. So I would I would lean into that. So just based on vibes on on who you get along with on the golf course, if you were to make your own Smash Golf Club, uh, I guess first of all, what would the name be of it? Probably the ho the homosexuals, I would imagine. Uh, who would yeah, you draft? I've decided it really depends on who owns the tour because I don't. The that live one guys. Doesn't fly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't fly. It's so great over there. So, uh, yeah, who would you draft? But, uh, you already picked my team, PFT. I'm going Charlie Woods number one. Yep. His dad, he wants number two. Baby Kong uh, number three. I I'll take only straight legs, big cat. Uh, <laughs> as my last. <laughs> Dude, I would buy <laughs> live golf. I, I would. I, I am golf, but louder when I don't bend my knees whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, That's actually, that would be so good. <laughs> it'd be so good if uh, it's, uh, it's the only rule. I could be on it, but I just. I can never, ever bend my knees whatsoever. <laughs> um, has it been, I, I would assume right now, like doing media kind of sucks because this every question is about the live and the PIF and PGA. Are you, are you at the end of it? Are you like, I, I, I can't keep answering questions to answers. I don't even, ha I, you probably don't even have any answers to the questions that are being asked of you. Well, I was excited because this is actually kind of the, this is the kind of beginning. I have my press conference tomorrow at three um so that will be the true uh meat of it i would imagine i don't know how deep you guys are gonna get <laughs> no, that, i was just gonna guys, a little trick that we do is instead of asking the annoying question we're like dude how about these guys asking you this annoying question <laughs> and then you have to answer the <laughs> question that's why you guys are uh, true capital j's um <laughs> I don't know. It's it is though. It's one of those I'm going into. I don't know anything. It hasn't passed yet. Nothing's really. <laughs> apparently, nothing was. You know, we don't know anything. We weren't even told it was happening. So uh, I'm 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 playing uh, that card because I guess it, it's uh, it's become a theme. But uh, you say something in an interview, they decide to do something else. You kind of you could always do the uh, you know freezing cold takes thing. Like what a dumb thing that wasn't true at all. So uh, I'm going to start actually uh, trusting my gut here and just not saying a damn thing about it because I don't know anything. So yeah. I guess time will tell. But uh, it's what a world, man. This is crazy. You know, when I was a little kid uh, practicing golf, trying to think about making a putt to win the U.S. Open, I did not think at any point if I got good enough, I'd be talking about um, 
the uh, Saudi public investment fund and uh, <laughs> what that means to golf. Yeah. I'll, I'll give you an easy one, though, because you, you are going to have to face the media. They'll have some tough questions for you. Here's an easy one. You know the game, FMK, right? Fuck, Mary kill is what we're going to do. Oh, uh, yeah. FMK, it's uh, your wife, your wife, so two different versions of your wife, oh, no. and then Jay Monahan. Mm-hmm. So which which oh, one man. of those do you kill? <laughs> yeah, he can't even be mad about that one. He's obviously the kill. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> respectfully. Yeah, all due respect. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wesley Snipes crying, yeah. shooting a guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you could also. No offense, Jay, but yeah, I'm taking, I'm taking my wife on the first two. Uh, significantly uh more intimate ones i don't know if this would play but i've always thought that uh you know when 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 they did this steroid investigation with congress and all that shit and you had like mark mcguire being like i'm here to talk about the, i'm not here to talk about the past i'm here to talk about the future and sammy sosa just being like no habla and glace if you just did no habla and glace like could anyone say anything just be like we did Max. I mean, they he can just say something, speak- but it better be in Spanish. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Just be like, I sorry, I don't know. Get, who, who's the ESPN dude that do covers the uh, like ESPN Deportes? Oh, uh, oh, Sergio, Sergio, Sergio Dip. Dip. Sergio yeah. Dip was oh, awesome. No, he's the legend. Yeah, yeah. He's he would probably be the one in there and just start rattling something off, and I'm just absolutely lost. Yeah, or you could just speak Italian the entire time too. Yeah. That, that would be good. <laughs> just speak with your hands. <laughs> Not too far too. You guys labeled me as like much more Italian. Than I am. I'm like a mutt, but probably 10 percent Italian. Everyone's like, I'm Italian too. I'm like, cool. Yeah. <laughs> we have. Ha, speaking of which, and we we did do the PSA. Has it gotten better? Has it have the fans uh, gotten better? I don't want to throw AWOs on the bus under the bus. There have been a couple good ones. Um, yelling, I'm not going to call you a pervert. Uh, doesn't count. No, that a, doesn't. No. no, that person's banned. That person's banned. <laughs> Listen, I'll, I'll say it right now in front of you. Max is playing at his home course. In his mind, he <laughs> thinks he's the favorite, which he's not even close. So <laughs> I didn't say I was. You <laughs> uh Everyone needs to come together and be as supportive as possible for Max this weekend. Like this is this should be when like for some reason every time Phil plays in in New York, people love him. Like they, everyone needs to be behind Max 100%. There can't be any funny business, no p words, and I mean this. No like funny business. If, if we see any p words or hear any p words, you're banned from the show. We will we will find <laughs> you and we will publicly humiliate you in front of everyone. Somebody made me laugh pretty hard. They're like, "How did uh, Brooks Brooks get Brooks of the Year or Blake of the Year and Max got pervert?" Yeah, yeah, that one was tough. That you were right. Majors probably. I mean, he earned that, but it is pretty funny. Yeah, no, we're gonna be listening. Like, I'll give it to him. We're gonna be watching. If we hear the p words out there, it is takey season coming up in what three weeks? Oh yeah, four weeks. I know. I've thought about that. That's why I don't want to throw the the AWs no, under the bus. No, no, throw them under. This is the biggest challenge that they've had. It's and earned, not given. If they want to be what seven-time winners, eight-time, eight-time winners, this is where you step up to the plate because we'll we will take it say, away. We'll give it to the daddy gang. Say, we will. If, if the AWLs do not win, the uh, you know their eighth year in a row, ninth year in a row, whatever it is, um, at, at the takeies, I will say I might have to bring back to all of all of the AWLs who have been meeting. I might have to start saying the the suck my dick thing that we don't say. Anymore. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, it might, might be one of those two wrongs might make a right. <laughs> yes, I like that. Uh, no, but seriously, everyone's yeah. got to be fucking cool about it because we will not. We will. Dak Shepard had a huge year again with his podcast. Um, Prince Harry. There's a lot of good podcasts out there. Yeah, okay. they yeah. could get. The, they <laughs> could get AWL. <laughs> that would be a tough blow. <laughs> that would be that would be rough. Uh, mean Girls are having a good year. Yeah, Mean Girls pods popping off. I don't know what they call the. Uh, how about how about Only Stands with Glenny Balls? I mean, that's kind of uh, yeah. That that's the number what, one what audience. A, what what a uh, podcast he backed his way into. Uh, was, mm-hmm. He's a genius. That's remarkable. <laughs> he's a genius. Really, he is. Every time that comes across my feed, it shocks me because I've been around Glenny enough to just. I just never saw that in his cards uh, with these, uh, you know, women uh, basically begging, uh, begging him to be a part of their uh, their profession. Yeah. <laughs> and my my oh my, is he taking advantage of this? It, uh, I'm impressed. It's uh, it sounds like you're a listener to only stands. I'm a uh, Instagram on my feed listener. I'm okay, a supporter okay. of Bernie Balls. Come I didn't want to. I didn't want to get the p word going again. Uh the yeah no <laughs> Glenny Balls the Wolf of Ball Street did you see the very like there was an actual article the other day that uh, all right see you Cam 
Bye, Cam. Thanks, Cam. <laughs> hey, bye, bye. Okay, now that he's gone, uh, you better not <laughs> fucking suck on this weekend, okay? <laughs> no, <Fair> uh, <laughs> no, but the Wolf of Ball Street, there was a press release. Some dick pill company, uh, their stock went up by like 80% because they announced a sponsorship with Glenny Balls and only stands. <laughs> Come on. He's moving markets. The guy is the fucking – Glenny Balls has like the greatest job slash is the greatest at a job that anyone has ever done. Like he is, he's just an incredible so, force. So I gotta of tell, I gotta tell one Glenny story. Um, I hope, I mean, I don't think this is a, uh, uh, I'm proud of him for this. So this is a good story. So I hope he's not upset. I'm, I'm sharing the, uh, you know, behind the scenes stuff. But uh, when I did my Sunday conversation with Caleb, like uh, last year or two years ago or whatever, uh, I had known Caleb quite a bit, but I had never met Glenny. So hang out with Glenny, whatever. That night, me, Caleb, and a couple of my friends went to dinner. And when we were at dinner, I was just kind of asking about everywhere. I was like, you know, it's Glenny guy. You know, what, a, you know, seems like a trip. You know, he's got the Hawaiian shirt on. Uh, he'll, you know, he's just, you know, he's built different. He just follows, kind of eats the ice cream. I was like, what's, you know, what's his deal? Like, how, how is he? Because he, Glenny had also texted me, like, to come meet us out that night uh, when we went to the bars. And he's like, oh, no, Glenny's a man. He's like, also, he goes, he gets more girls than anybody I've seen. And I was like, come on. Like, actually, Glenny Balls. Like, his name's Glenny Balls. Girls all about him and he goes yep all about him so text glennie uh caleb comes with us we end up going out to the bars glennie ends up rolling in 30 minutes later i would say five minutes after glennie gets to the table there are two girls on his arm and caleb <laughs> is just you know doing the caleb face like i told you and i was like god dang dude glennie's he's got king. it he's got the sauce we, we, we might have to cut this part out but there was one time where glennie was uh he was out of commission he was on the dl for two weeks yeah with a sprained neck because he ate so much pussy <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say that story if PFT didn't, so we won't cut it out. Uh, That's so sick. Yeah. No, he went. He came back and he was like, "I can't move my neck." Yeah. No. He and was we, just like, "Why?" He he's like, a, "I was eating pussy." It was a neck brace, like Uncle Junior in court, but yeah. for the real Uncle Junior. <laughs> I mean, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's the man. Yeah, he's the man. It's um, the old Arnold. Clearly. It's the old Arnold line: eating isn't cheating. So he's fine. Yeah, I, I'm, not so, I'm not so sure we can all subscribe to that one. But, I mean, Glenn, he seems to make his own rules, so he can, he can do whatever he wants. Yeah. I got another balls-related question, but it's actually about, it's about the, the golf ball. Does does golf have a ball problem? I've been reading a lot about how the players on tour, there's some sort of like, I don't know, period where you guys can uh, you can submit your reviews of whether or not the <laughs> balls have gotten too good. Have the balls gotten too good in golf? I mean, the balls are quite good. Um I, I mean, uh, are they too good is the question. I don't know. Um, it's it's weird. I guess we only know what we have, so we all like it and don't want to have uh, anything change. Um, if my phone falls one more time, I'm going to lose my mind. Sorry, boys. Uh, That's okay. We have like half your head. It's fine. This is actually a great, I know it's better. It's I, be a great I YouTube. If you're I'm listening gonna... to this, go watch on YouTube. <laughs> I'm going to hold it. Um, so – there's a problem that so we're the U.S. Open is is run by the USGA. The USGA is the one doing this. Uh, they think we have a our balls are too good, um, and they have an issue because they've you know hosted a bunch of golf tournaments that have kind of gone awry. They've made a couple rules changes that people haven't liked. I like the USGA. Uh, I like well, I like most of the people at the USGA, and they're in this weird spot where I I feel like if they told us that the sky was blue, we would say no, it's purple at this point. Like there's just not a lot of trust. So we could we we're getting reports about what why the ball is so good, and I just don't think a lot of guys uh, are a hundred percent in on their info. Mm -hmm. But I also think I mean selfishly, I wouldn't want to change. Uh, I don't want to change balls. Uh, my balls my balls feel feel good. Uh, when I got them in the bag and uh, when I take them out of the bag, uh, they feel good too. So um, that was supposed to be a joke and that sounds fucking painful. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I guess from like a, a viewer perspective, I've never once watched golf and, and been like, I can't watch this sport anymore. The balls are too good. Is there so actually that, like an impact? That's kind of my take. There are the sickos out there, the golf sickos, which I get. They're the golf sickos who the golf courses they think are playing too short now, you know, where – we're, I guess, not playing it to how they were designed anymore. And and there's 
an issue with, you know, make it having more land and how, what are you going to keep doing? Just knocking down trees and homes. Like what, you can't keep making the golf course longer and longer. Like that's one angle, I guess, but I just don't know any of my many friends who casually watch golf, who have thought to themselves, I'm not turning this shit on on Sunday. I'm so fucking sick of watching Rory McIlroy hit driver and then a wedge. Like I know there's sickos out there. I know there's, there's great golf fans who are in it deep and they're very invested. I just don't think that for the majority of the fans, that's that big of a deal. Yeah. And so it's, I'm just a little bit, I'm, I'm not so sure where I stand on it. Uh, I like what I play. I, I, I don't know. It just doesn't seem like a big enough deal to make this big of a fuss about it, but I mean, shoot, I'm just a golfer. I don't, I don't really know shit about anything. I don't know shit about fuck. So <laughs> you can say that now because yeah. Cam's in the other room. Um, I want to go back to something because we should, we should talk about it. Positive vibes going to the U S open 61 at this course still is the course record. Uh, wh- is it going to be set up similar distance wise? And I know they make the U S open very hard every year, but in like 61 probably won't happen just by the design, but is it like pretty much the same course that you have the course record on? Yeah, it's pretty similar. I mean, I wouldn't let my home golf course change too much after, uh, <laughs> the 61. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's longer. Some people are saying they max proofed it. I, I don't know. I've just heard a few people, a few murmurs. Um, but no, they, they lengthened it actually uh, uh, quite a bit. They've added some tees on the par threes. I don't know if you've seen that picture that went around the 290 yard par three. Jesus. Uh, that was not there when I did that. Um, so yeah, it'll be uh it'll be a bit longer, but they haven't changed too much of the golf course. Uh, but I, I think they're going to make it firm. It, it, the sun came out today so they can start making it really fast and, I mean, I can't imagine it playing uh, to or, to a place where you could shoot 61, but uh, I've seen, I mean, I've seen crazier things done. Uh, I would love to be, uh, I'd love to somehow get back to that place and somehow fire something like that. Uh, but I don't know. Play If you played the golf course today, I could tell you, I could, I could have seen it, but I just imagine by Thursday, it's going to be a, a different golf course. You, so, go ahead. I was going to say, what do you shoot on a, on a 290 yard par three? What, what do you take out of your bag? Uh, today it was downhill, a little downwind. So I hit three iron, but there's another part three on the front nine seven. That was two sixty five into the wind yesterday. So we had three wood. I mean, it's a monster. I could see, I guess, um, you know, with the U S open, they have the, the amateur qualifier or the qualifying for it. So you get a lot of, or at least a handful every once in a while of guys who, uh, you know, don't play professional golf. They're, they're just, uh, they qualify for the U S open and, some of those guys don't hit it super far, uh, like the young kids these days. And uh, I could see somebody having to bang driver uh, on one of those two part threes, which is a, a tall task. Uh, but they, it's a fair golf course. But you look at that number and it's pretty daunting. But, you know, uh, uh, dimple heads like us know that par is just a uh, that, that's just a construct. Uh, it's just about how many total 72 yeah. at Shinnecock. I mean, you, yeah. you could call it even par, but it's just a 72. Right. Wait, and I go driver on par threes, no matter what the distance. So that actually works for my game. Straight legs, straight drives, <laughs> yeah. short butts. 90 yeah. yards driver. Straightest golfer in the world. <laughs> yeah. Just take a little bit off of it. What? So wait, get back. So that's 61. Like when you were shooting that 61, were you in your, in your head? Like, Holy shit. I am so on fire. We need to get, we get back to that max. I mean, I was full blackout. Uh, it was a nice day. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's one of those, one of those, uh, I mean, we've all had it. One of those days where everything's just going right. Um, but yeah, I can I can get back to that max. I mean, I, it was in California, obviously. So, uh, the golf gods, uh, treat me quite nicely in this state. Uh, so I'm hoping for a little bit of that magic, but, uh, every once in a while, you know, the, the kid can get it going. It's, it, it's been a while since I fired a 61 about 10 years, but uh, I, I mean, I, f- I feel good. I, I'm not going to, I'm It's not going to sit up here and guarantee a, a 61 or anything near it. Uh, but it is nice to play a golf course where I know that I've done something pretty great. Yes. Uh, and then get to play a major, uh, I mean, that feels like, that feels like part of part of positive vibes only. I mean, that is very positive. Yeah. Yes. I mean, look back at what happened with Matt Fitzpatrick, right? Yeah, when, when he won, that was on the course. Oh, that's that? right. Massachusetts. Yeah, yeah. Like the, his home course in Massachusetts. I know he's yeah. British. It's the, the Englishman's home course in uh, in his neighborhood of Boston. Yeah, yeah, you can do it. You can you can definitely do this. Uh, I've, I've been watching a lot of the videos this week of of people just dropping balls into the rough and watching them disappear <laughs> into the Bermuda grass. I love that. If you're out there, you know, and you're playing in the U.S. Open, 
you've got spotters. You've got guys that will show you where your ball went. If you went out there and you played in this rough without those spotters, how many balls do you think you'd lose just by missing the fairway by 10 feet? So not as so those videos are so fucking annoying, by the way. It's like it's become like a yearly golf tradition just to be like, you see this, you can't even see the ball. Yeah. Um, but it off the fairway, uh, the rough's not really that bad. It's not like a normal US open. It's not great, but it's not that bad. But where they're dropping, it's behind a few of the greens where they let it grow. So I don't think you would lose that many balls. Um you know, hitting your second shots over greens, even if you didn't have spotters, but there's a couple spots around. This is, I'll give a little inside baseball when you go, when you guys watch uh, this weekend um, around the bunkers is the longest, thickest grass known to man. And you'll just barely miss the ball going into the bunker. And people are going to be so fucked and so frustrated because the ball is going to be, you know, two, three steps from being good. And it's going to be so, so, so bad. And I would, I, you could definitely lose a couple in there. I lost, uh, we lost in our group yesterday, left of eight. We lost a ball or two. Uh, it's like, hey, uh, in there, and it's it's not good. So I could see that, but I don't – I mean, I don't think I would lose a ball here without a spotter, but, I mean, I have to say that because I'm a professional. Yeah. Uh, but there's been a couple of U.S. Opens where if you didn't have spotters, I guarantee you I'd lose two, three, or four for it, sure. I always love the guy that says, like, oh, he'd rather be in the bunker there. Yeah, you know, yeah, like when you hit true. it right next to the bunker, oh, yeah. that's a tough break because actually the sand is preferable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that that that's a that that's yeah, the we're advanced, drop that for uh, sure. Have you thought about? Uh, I was watching the Canadian Open on Sunday, and I, I listen. I am a dimplehead, but I'm not up to all the rules. Fleetwood just like absolutely crushing one into the stands and getting a free drop. I then spent the next ten minutes uh, on my couch being like, is there an advantage to just like hitting it as hard as you can right into the stands over and over for free drops. And then I realized, oh, yeah, you're a professional golfer, so you can probably just aim for the pin. But have you thought about that? Just, like, letting it rip and just being like, what does it matter? It's a fucking – I get a free drop. Yeah, so uh, funny you mentioned that. One of my favorite Joe uh, stories, my caddy, uh, we were in uh, Minnesota three years ago maybe, and the, the last hole uh, is a par five and the second shot's all over water. And we were between three iron and three wood. It was uh, in the pin, you know, it was just, just past the water. And then there's a, a decent amount of green, a bunch of rough, and then the grandstands. And I'm in between. I think if I don't hit three iron, great. It's going to go in the water, but three wood felt like too much. So Joe goes, listen, he's like, I got a great idea. Cause let's hit three wood. If it, if it comes out really good, it'll just fly long and it'll bounce into the, into the well, uh, backstop, basically backstopping. It'll bounce into the grandstand and it'll stop in the rough. And maybe if you hit it hard enough, it'll, it'll shoot back onto the green. And he's like, Oh, kind of, kind of, kind of cocky about the way he said it. I'm like, it's brilliant. Like you're a genius. This is why I pay you the big bucks. So we hit three wood. I hit it and it's right at it, but it's, it's, I hit it good. So it's, it's definitely going over the green into the stands. And he's yelling while it's in the air, hit that backstop, hit that fucking backstop. I, it was 280 yards away and I can still hear the ping of one of the metal parts of the uh, structure. It hit it, hit the dead center pole, shot straight back past the flag into the water. <laughs> <laughs> I go to look at Joe. To, I honestly have all the bad, you know, what are bad shots you get bad, whatever of all the things I went to look at Joe cause I was going to lose my mind laughing. Cause it was just, Everything went perfect. He thought it was great. He was talking about it there, whatever. I went to go find Joe, and he was already like thirty yards ahead of me with his head down. He thought he thought he broke the course. He, was like, <laughs> he thought he broke the game. For yeah, a he was basically me sitting on my couch. So you should you should check that. That's fucking yes. hilarious. What about the end of that tournament, the, the Canadian Open, when uh, when Dude got tackled on yeah, the yeah, Adam Hadwin. Yeah, yeah, trying to celebrate with his buddy, like spraying champagne on him. Have you thought about who you would like to spray champagne on you, and then also get get jacked up on the 18th green? Um, <laughs> I can honestly say I've never thought about that. Um, who would be funny? Patrick. Reed. There's a lot of funny ones. Yeah, Patrick Reed. That would be funny. Bryson makes these kinds of things funny, although he's big, and that would be Nate need a big he's security not that guard. Big That's a security guard that took. People are asking that? if he lifts anymore. Bryson isn't that Is big. Is he not that big anymore? No, he's not that big. Kind of a weenie. Dang. Dang, muscle shaving. <laughs> um, I don't know. Ha 
Hadwin, uh, Hadwin's not a big fella. <laughs> he was not. I feel like he was an easy target. I would like to know if someone like you know Brooks' size was doing what Adam was doing. If that security guard would feel the same. Yeah. Uh, kind of bravado, but uh, I don't know. I'm gonna have to table that one. I, there's a lot of funny people. Actually, right now, Justin Thomas took a bunch of money off me today, so I'd like him to get tackled. Okay. Um, okay. I, actually, yeah. that's my answer forever. I would love Justin Tom- Thomas after <laughs> Or Ricky Fowler. That'd be funny to see Ricky just go flying. <laughs> his belt pops off, his neon belt Ricky flies Ricky was my away. partner today, so he doesn't deserve that after, after what happened to us. Um, all right, well, Max, it's been awesome. I got one last question. Rowback question, R-H-O-B-A-C-K.com. Use code TAKE. For 20% off your first purchase, Q-Zips, polos, hoodies, uh, joggers, shorts. I was wearing the shorts all weekend. Roback.com, promo code TAKE for 20% off your first purchase. All right, so we got to think positive. We got to think, don't push it. You you are great. You're a great golfer. You're about to go to your home course where you have a 61. Um, I just want you to know, and this isn't really a question. It's more just a statement. Um, it's Father's Day, obviously, for you. You're doing it for Cam. You got to visualize Cam being put into your arms at the 18th green uh, after you win. But also remember all the dads, and I'm not going to name names, but some people who you know really like you and consider you a friend who are going to bet on you also have children, and you could be ruining Father's <laughs> Day for them too. Yeah, and there and some of those friends are have a big move upcoming. Yeah, um, so it's a lot of stress, yeah. and and also some of those friends again, not going to name names. Uh, had Will Zalatoris in the U.S. Open last year, also on Father's Day, and he missed that putt, and he screamed, what the fuck, in front of all his kids <laughs> on Father's Day. So we don't want to have a repeat of that for these hypothetical fathers out there. That's fair. Um, hypothetically speaking, though, it, it does seem a little bit easier to get over after, hypothetically, one of those friends made like $70,000 in the Mark last Brooks, season. yeah. Mm. Yeah, but I'll tell you what. When when people say like, oh, yeah, you know, like you, a bad loss, and then you look in your kid's eyes and it all melts away, that's bullshit. That is bullshit. <laughs> I, I, last year in the U.S. Open, I my son actually said, Dad, it needs a break. And I was like, yeah, I need a break. <laughs> this is bad. <laughs> so there's a, we're, we're, I'm going to root for you hard. We got I, all the power behind you. You just got to think Thank positive you. thoughts. You can do this. We know you can do it. I'm in, boys. I feel good. Uh, I know I say that every time, but I do feel no, good. No, this time's uh, different. I, this this time's different. Um, it just takes one, you know, and and, may, and maybe that is this one. Uh, so I'm excited. It will be fun, man. Getting to play, uh, all jokes aside, getting to play a major championship in my hometown is sick. So uh, it it'll be it'll be a blast. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, to making it a very happy Father's Day for all of my gambling friends. Uh, who are dads out there? Let's just do baby steps too. You you you've done the baby step of making the cut in the majors. Let's do baby <laughs> step of let's say uh, top ten going into Sunday in the mix. Yeah, in the mix. I'll take it. Let's just see. Put me just in the play mix. golf. Just play golf on Sunday. Let let the let it fall wherever it may. Yeah, just get in the mix and then and then let it rip. I, I'm all I'm all in on that. Yeah, I just want you to shoot as good as you possibly can. Yeah. I want you to be the best max that max can be that's it you know the rest is just a number now yeah your best is actually shooting a 61 every day you've proven <laughs> that you can do that yeah so you should just do that again 461 yeah, i mean that would be sick 36 under par if i don't win that one i think i gotta just crawl in a hole um but yeah in the wise words of uh, russell westbrook just we're just gonna have fun yeah we're just gonna have that's fun all that matters. as long as we have fun it's it's a successful day last tip for you uh i do this uh as a larger man who doesn't like to work out when i go on the treadmill i put a towel over the screen so that i don't have to look at the <laughs> the mileage slowly creep up uh what if you just put a big towel over the leaderboard and you're like i'll just let me know on sunday where i stand I don't, I don't hate like that. That would be all time if you finish like I was U.S. Open. You never know. You finished ten over, and you're just like, look at Joe. Did I win? Yeah, huh? right. Like, <laughs> did we I, do it? No, dude, man. You got forty seconds. I'll, I'll put a towel over the treadmill, and I'll I'll get on it for like thirty minutes, and then I'll take it off, and it'll be like you've run one point two five miles. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> That'd be embarrassing. Hey, did you if see you did. that asshole that ran two miles in like seven and a half minutes? No, Mincy yeah, he broke the record. Bullshit. Oh, who who was it? I'm not, I'm not a. Is not there a, a two mile head. record? Yeah, Jake. I, I feel like that's. Oh yeah. Oh, last last question. Do you think there's some rumors now that Jake's hole in one was fake? 
Any thoughts? Yeah, those people are idiotic, and I hit a hole in I'm one. I'm starting to think and that screw it, all those I'm people. I'm starting to think the the rumor might be true because Dude, so uh, yeah, it's the, a perfect uh, crime. Quick funny story. Uh, day before Jake, uh, the day before your hole in one, one of my best friends Stephen made his first hole in one. I'm in a group chat with him and my buddy Kyle, who has has not had a hole in one. So Stephen's freaking out. Kyle was a little bit jealous, and the next day. Uh, your video gets kind of flown around our group chat. And my friend Kyle said something to the tune of, I need to get on a golf course ASAP. The golf co- gods are clearly asleep right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, I, it was pointed out to me that my initial reaction when someone said that video was fake was I was like, Jake would never fake anything. He's the most honest guy I know. And the person said, exactly. And I was like, hmm. <laughs> now that is revealed, interesting. If it gets revealed that it's fake, I'll do the Ray Allen tweet. Okay, okay. Oh, hell but yes. how we're we gonna reveal it? We'll just pay one of his friends like thousand yeah, yeah, yeah. dollars. Like just say that it's. It was yeah. perfectly yeah. done, by the way. Like your the way you you cheered and had your friends cheer was. Yeah, I was yeah, talking. The special was effects were, I was, were talking awesome. about these done. accusations of my friend over the weekend. And they're like, oh, yeah, you should have ran up to the ball. I'm sorry. When you get a hole-in-one, yeah. you're not thinking of every step of mm. how you're going to film it's it. Especially, especially right. if you faked it. But. Right, exactly. I'm, especially yeah. if you faked it. You know, Why would you run up if you if the ball's not in there? It's convenient. Is right. All. Also, I, I have would... the full video of my friend running up and giving me the thumbs up. The one who was running. Yeah, he oh, was in so, on it. But he we didn't see exactly. the ball. I we just saw you. the thumbs up. I would be like a police yeah. officer. I, oh, okay. I would have a body yeah. cam. Right. I golf with a body cam on me at all yeah. times, and yeah. I activate it on par threes and short par fours just in it's case It's just moving happens. the goalpost. If I didn't have a video, no one would believe it. Now I have a video, but it's not good enough. Well, I, either way, it was probably fake, but Max, uh, <laughs> when, I, when I fill out my next scorecard, um, I'm going to just casually put in a hole-in-one and just like just let it sit there. Could you, if you could please retweet it and be like, holy shit, congrats on the hole-in-one. I would, I would appreciate that. Uh, hey, I'm in. You buy me a beer, I'm in. <laughs> okay, done. Deal. Oh, Max, can you also get us one of those hats that just say media on them? <laughs> yeah, steal I a love those hats. Of- Did you see uh, Trent had one on today? Oh, yeah, I won. Those, hats, those hats kick ass. Those and the ones that just say grit on them yeah. at, at a golf grit. tournament. I love those. <laughs> yes. I'll, I'll try to find one. I, I got it. I, I that hat was I was like so you don't need a credential anymore you just need to go into the pro shop and buy a media hat. Yeah, anybody can buy just one. I want, I want that too. I want that too. Yeah. Citizen journalism. Yeah, I love it. All right, well, Max, All right. thank you so much. Uh, best of luck. We are rooting for you very hard, and uh, go get them. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, you guys are the best. PFT, I love you guys. Oh, Ooh, we go. oh you want to do? I you like... want to guess real quick because you've gotten the ball yeah, so many yeah, more yeah. times. You want twenty five again? Twenty five has been hot. No, I have a new. I have a new mission. I want sixty nine. I want to get it before Billy gets. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, numbers. Max has sixty nine. I'll take seventeen. Eighteen. I'll take twenty five. Oh. No, you don't have sixty nine. You know, I got it tattooed on me after I got after I. Hit <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Max has sixty nine. Okay. Uh, twenty one. Okay, Billy's mad. Just so you know. No, he doesn't even he's care. Very mad. He's very mad. He's very mad. Don't, don't, really mad. So don't, so don't mad. care at all. I don't. He's so mad. Memes, you ever gotten it? Twenty. <laughs> One. <laughs> what I guess? Oh, I guess seventeen. He's not mad at all. He's just really. No, if sixty-nine hits and someone else guesses. Oh, fifty-six. It, mm. I'm gonna smash the ball machine. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you're that's, not, that's a totally that's mad you are. No, way no, to do no, this. No, I, yeah. I just it's a threat. So if you want to choose it and it hits, like no more ball machine. Oh, but again, not mad until, until yeah, that's not <laughs> totally not, not mad. Yeah, it's just, it's just not like being a baby and not ruining the fun for everyone It's a line in the sand. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, because you stole my sex number ball. All right, thank you, Max. All right, see ya. Four sixty one. You guys, take care, Billy. Later. Bye. See ya. Okay, we now welcome on our very good friend, five-time major champion, Brooks Kepka. We are, he is, just to set the scene, he's watching his peas uh, go down very sadly. Get, you know what, Brooks? I'll cheer you up. I'm sure they'll get in a fight and maybe win the fight at the end of the game. Yeah, I hope so. That's about all, that's about the only thing we're going to win tonight. <laughs> yeah. So, all right, we can't let this, though, affect what's going on this week because uh we we stumbled on the fact that every time you come on before a major you win the major this is the week la country club uh let's start with how you're feeling give us general vibes you feeling good i mean a lot a lot of things in the news the last couple weeks how you feeling yeah yeah uh it's been crazy um i feel uh, five feels great i gotta be honest yes i've uh i've sobered up 
we're back on track we're ready to go um yeah so definitely feel, feeling a lot better than i did a few days after yeah that's actually a smart move is to just get real banged up right afterwards and then you feel great you know a week later that's that's like thinking seven dimensional chess we, we saw you at the peas game uh the and internet <laughs> yeah the internet had its fun with you at the, at the panthers game they didn't understand just how locked in you were on the hockey yeah oh i was locked i was glued didn't even want to blink. I was yeah. afraid I was going to miss something. <laughs> when you were – I went, then the heat came the next night. Um, were you just gassed? Like, you looked gassed by the heat game. Oh, uh, the heat game, I think, was my uh, – I think I'd slept, like, five hours. The total – going to the heat game, I was, I was struggling to stay awake. Honestly, the drive down was miserable. It was, like, two and a half hours, and um, – yeah, I was it was I was banged up and then they lost and that made it way worse. The drive <laughs> yeah. back. Yeah. Um but yeah, so I got it all out of my system. Um yeah, I mean it makes you appreciate the good days. Yeah. That's what it does. Uh-huh. <laughs> You're out. Like, yeah. When, <laughs> when did you start to feel like that, feeling great? I right like now. that. Instead of being like injured you know, being injured makes you appreciate your health. No, being hung violently hung over for four days makes you appreciate being non not hungover. Yeah. Exactly. You know what the worst is the day like you're sober and you get that first hangover, but then the delayed onset hangover uh, that happens the day after you're sober. That's almost worse. Yeah, I just I just figured if I just kept drinking that I'd be all right. Yeah. <laughs> so that was more the uh the, the plan I was on. So it was a solid three days, four days of just uh it was, I was banged up. That's yeah, why. you deserved it. Yeah. So, so today, I I heard that you shot sixty two today. Is that true? Yeah, could have. Yeah, could That's, have? I like that. We'll, we'll go with that. Okay, would you it shoot something around there? Okay, I have no idea. Uh, it was definitely under par. I beat DJ and Will, and I played with those two today, so I beat them. Okay, nice. Now, I heard a, a little birdie told me that this course plays slow. Is that true? I don't understand how a course could play slow. Is there like a log jam anywhere? That's the only thing I'm worried about with you this weekend. Yeah, I mean, I'm not really sure who I'm playing behind. But, you know, if certain people are in front of me, it could it could play slow. Yeah. but Just saying. But you've learned the trick that you aren't going to tell anyone, but we know the trick because we just picked up on context clues. If you walk slower, then you can't be held up. Exactly. <laughs> just take, you know, a little... A little longer getting to the ball, maybe a little bathroom break. Yes. Yeah, and I mean, this is a perfect course for it. You've got the Playboy Mansion that is overlooking the course. Doesn't it, like, isn't the backyard of the Playboy Mansion on this golf course? It is. That was the only reason. I mean, I played this course in college before they redid it, and that was the only thing that I remembered from it. <laughs> um, <laughs> of course. <laughs> the golf course wasn't that bad. I couldn't remember any of the holes, but I just remember the Playboy Mansion was on it, and it's a damn shame you can't even see it. <laughs> yeah. God, that could have been fun. The whole placement on that was at number six. <laughs> I can't wait till they put that one out. We should do another uh, pin placement map and then have number six just be a bunch of vaginas yes. all over it. Yes. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're excited to watch you play uh, Southern California golf. I've heard there's been a lot of people talking about the rough. They're, they're, they're talking about the rough, I feel like, because it's the U.S. Open and you have to talk about the rough. Is it really that bad, or is it just in like a few spots? It's it's bad in some spots, but I don't know. I really, honestly, the practice rounds I haven't been in it. I like that. I like that See? a lot. But yeah, I'm just planning on not going in it, so then I, I should be all right. Yeah, That's smart. That's why I don't have a sandwich. Yeah, I don't. I, I stay. Exactly. I keep out of the bunker. Driver and putter. All right, I got the, I got the guys you're playing uh, behind. So Billy Horschel, Chris Kirk. And Brian Harmon. Oh, they're fine. Yeah, okay, they be all right. Fine. Boom. That's a, that's a good start. I like that. Yes. I didn't even look to see who was in front of me, but I, I like that. Yeah. Okay. All right. We feel good. Um, What was the workout you were doing where you were just jumping up and down in your pool? Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, that was the other day. One day. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. It's been a bit of a blur lately. Um, yeah. It was a little bit of a detox. Had to get a little sweat going. Yeah. Um, I don't know my trainer. He's actually trying to get me to go in the pool right now, but I'll be honest, I'm 100% way too lazy and don't even feel like going in there. <laughs> Your trainer sounds awesome. Yeah, wait, how does that work? <laughs> if you're tra- – like, you hire a trainer and he's like, Brooks, it's time to work out, you can say no? 
Uh, yeah, I've had my. I'm I'm picking my moments right now. Uh, I'm trying to get the game. You know, we've had the game on TV, so I'm trying. I'm using every excuse in the book right now. Yeah, I'm like the Panthers are on. I don't really feel like it. The Panthers are gonna then, lose. Now you're bummed. Yeah, it's like, yeah. hey, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna be depressed for a little bit, and then yeah. So I'm trying. I'm trying my best here. Yeah, you don't want to be depressed in a pool. That's a sad look. <laughs> yeah, like Kendall Roy. Yeah. Wait, is that the workout that that we were hearing about with uh is that the Smash GC workout that you know it's not for oh, everybody? No, that is not that is not that is not the Smash the Smash workout is uh is is more you guys could do it. It's easy. What does that mean? We could do the other one too. You just were in the pool jumping up and down. Yeah, yeah, I mean you guys are athletes. You guys could do it all. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just saw it and I was like is this a workout or is he playing in this pool? No. Yeah. Yeah, both. Yeah, both. But yeah, the Smash GC workouts are are apparently really tough. Uh, yeah, where that's, that's what I heard. <laughs> where, <laughs> where, where are we at with uh, the naming of your son Blake? Yeah, we're still working on that. Um, I, I definitely know that when you were messaging Jenna, that she I don't know she's somewhere back. She's behind me somewhere, but. I think honestly, a win this week just solidifies it. Mm -hmm. Because she, we did make a deal. She said, if he wins the U.S. Open, then I get to. She's like, I, Jenna, gets to name the the child, which she is giving birth, so she probably should get right of first refusal. But I said deal, so um, maybe it's just maybe me and Jenna will handle it. Yeah, I think. I, yeah, you guys <laughs> keep just DMing over <laughs> Instagram, and we'll get the baby's name eventually. It'll be all right. Dion Kepka. What do you think about that? <laughs> That's pretty good. That is a good name. Florida State. That's hey, I like it. <laughs> I tried. I tried to go with one of my sons is Dion Katz, and that was shut down quickly. Prime. Yeah. Quick. <laughs> um, yeah. We were talking to Max a second ago about these par threes on the course. What are you hitting on the on the two hundred ninety yard par three? Uh, I hit three iron and three wood on one on both of them. There's like it's stupid. They have two of them that are that distance. I mean, they're basically part fours, but it just happened to be part threes. You think anybody's going to lay up? There's got to be a short hitter out there that definitely does. But you can't do that. If it, let's say that like my drive topped out. It probably does top out around 270, 280, and knowing that I couldn't reach the green, you can't lay up on a par three at a U.S. Open. No, you're definitely smacking. I mean, there will be definitely guys that smack driver, which would be quite funny. That's going to be awesome. Um, but yeah, it. Uh, and then there's one that could play like 75 yards, Wait, which is really weird. One of the par threes. Yeah, if you go to the front of the tee box and put the pin in the front, it can play like 75 yards. Jesus, that's. I mean, I'd hit driver on that too. Just take a little bit off. Um, by the way, did you see? So uh, our colleague Dan Rapport did a um, a watch video with Matt Fitzpatrick from last year's U.S. Open. Um, Hank had the good idea of. Maybe we could do one with you uh, from the PGA Championship. So I'm just pulling up right now. Hole one, you hit driver. That was sick. You fucking crushed that. Crushed it. Murdered it. Literally, I don't know. I think it went in the fairway. Yeah, it did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then, it's not. We're just going to say it did. Yeah. yeah. And then hole two. Oh, I don't even remember. <laughs> I just remember I was holding that trophy. That was I just our recap. I was holding the trophy at the end, and then it got a bit blurry after that. that there's our recap. That was a good recap. That was a really good recap. I feel like we, 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 I think we it was fucking, perfect. We yeah, we it. got it all. Yeah. Uh, what's a good score here on this course? Is par? You were saying like a couple weeks ago, par is a good score at PGA. Is par a good score here? Mm, yeah, I think so. With the rough being difficult, I think honestly, I think winner will probably be. Six to eight under. Okay. Mm -hmm. you f are you going to win? I mean, that's why I'm on here. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. true. This is the, right. this is the final prep. This is the final. This is more important than doing anything with your trainer. Yeah, honestly. Yeah. I turned down all interviews basically at the course this week. I knew I was coming on here. This is the only one that matters. And uh, yeah. I love it. We're your mental it's coaches. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Just go out there and fucking kill it. Yeah. Just fucking crush it. Honestly, I just need to call you guys before every round. Yeah. Be my hype guys. Yeah. We'll do it. Just be like, Brooks, dude, you're sick at golf. Just go be sick at golf. You're Brooks. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Get Dave get Dave to call me too. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, if you win if you win this weekend, he's gonna be in 
a world of hurt because he was already in a world of hurt after the PGA. Uh, having to, he went radio silent the last round. So he, if that happens again this this weekend, I don't know what he's going to do. Yeah, it could be interesting. It'd be great. Do Do you listen? This is a real question. Do you like? There's there, you're now getting like talked about legacy and shit like that. Do you care about it? I mean, you care about it a little bit, I would assume. But it's kind of cool to be like once you get five, the list is getting smaller and smaller as you climb up there. Yeah, it's crazy. Um. I don't think it, you think about it right now. You don't think about it in the moment. I think it'd be cool to reflect on it when I'm done playing. Yeah. When I'm done, I'm like, damn, that was that was a sick run. That was sweet. Got five of these things, you know, working our way to six this week. Um, yeah, just I, I think looking back would be the coolest thing. But like when you're in the moment and you're doing it, it just you just keep keep plugging along. Ooh. You know, it'd be awesome if you got ten. Oh. Yeah, double digits, man. That's where I, I honestly, that's what I want. Yeah. Because I think what only three guys have ever had double digits. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Could be wrong. You got to get sure. him in now though before Charlie Woods gets up there. Mm-hmm. He's next up. <laughs> <laughs> you ever played with Charlie? <laughs> I think we might have asked you that. The, he, uh, the we, we'll say this right now because uh, we consider you a friend. You and Max are our guys. We root for you guys over everyone else. Once Charlie Woods comes on, we're probably going to lose your number. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I get that. <laughs> <laughs> By the time he, I don't know, what, what is he right now? He's he's, like he's fourteen. 12, We're grooming him. He's fourteen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I'll definitely. Call him. By then, my live contract will be done. <laughs> <I'm out. laughs> um, all right, I have one last thing. Uh, rowback question: R H O B A C K dot com. Promo code take for twenty percent off your first purchase. Q zips, polos, hoodies, uh, joggers, shorts, everything. Rollback dot com. By the way, it is now six one nights. Um, I don't know if you still have the game on Brooks. That's tough. Uh, but we can't we can't think about that. Uh, what I do want to ask you though is if you do win this weekend, um, not to get ahead of ourselves, but it would be kind of cool if you did like the MJ where he did the, the six. When he won the sixth, yeah, I'm just saying if you just if you flash the five and the one over and over to let everyone know, just something to think about. I'll be doing that all the way to Vegas. Okay, <laughs> I'll be doing that all the way to Vegas, and then you guys got to come. Oh, uh, don't tempt us. That yeah yeah, we have a really busy week next week. <laughs> I, I don't I don't think we have anything on Monday. <laughs> We're... Are you going straight to Vegas if you win <laughs> Sunday night? Absolutely yes. <laughs> we we might Absolutely. have to meet you there. Uh, yeah, I think I think that's uh, yeah, that would be epic, right? Yeah. You gotta go. I did I did that after the first one, and I feel like after six, it's like you gotta, yeah. you gotta oh, run six, back for yeah. sure. Do you sure. do you have one that you know that that's your favorite major? Probably the last one. I think yeah. that was pretty sick. No, no, it, wait, including including the party, but like this one could top it all. Yeah, you you wait. Ask that a question. Uh, question again you know how you have to answer brooks do you have a favorite major that you've won yes the, the next one yeah. yeah perfect okay you're ready he's ready he's ready he's ready he's ready all right well brooks hopefully we talk to you sunday night wait, wait is it really what'd you say it was six one six one six one yeah. it's six one nights all right well at least it's the over <laughs> yeah there yeah. you go exactly exactly <laughs> all right thanks brooks best of luck man all right thanks guys all right, all right. see you in vegas see ya our U.S. Open preview is brought to you by Turo. Love Turo. Turo is the world's largest car sharing marketplace. I got a car off Turo when I moved out to Chicago. I got a Chevy Silverado through Turo. It was a beast. It was so easy to use, too. You just you find your car that you want. You show up. You pick it up. You take pictures of the outside. You get in. You drive away. It's so easy to use. With Turo, you can book any car that you want for just about any occasion from a community of local hosts across the U.S., the U.K., Canada and Australia. You can book an SUV if you're going on a road trip. You can book something easy and affordable for getting around on vacation, or you can test drive an electric vehicle, or you can do what I do, get a truck if you're going to be hauling stuff around. Get a truck from Turo. You can even get a vintage car, or you can get something classy for a special event or a photo shoot, and every trip is backed by liability insurance, terms, conditions, and exclusions apply. Find your drive. Forget boring rental cars at Turo.com. Find your drive and forget boring rental cars by going to Turo.com. That's T-U-R-O.com. Okay, let's wrap up. Guys on Chicks. Henry, world-renowned 
female expert. No. You think? Do you Casanova. feel like you? Do you feel like you're person. a? You're that's a, you, Billy. That's foreshadowing. No, no, that. Hank's a hey, Casanova. Hank, do you feel like you know, um, like you understand women more now that you're in your thirties? No. Do you think that? Uh, I'd say less. Are you a daddy now? <laughs> <laughs> Our girl's like, man, Hank is so mature. He's a zaddy. What's a zaddy? I don't S- know. A sigma daddy? I've seen zaddy thrown around. I'm hearing Hank's a daddy. A sexually attractive man, especially an older one who's fashionable or charismatic. Yeah, Hank's, Fuck a, yeah. Hank's a, a zaddy. zaddy. Fuck yeah. I have a very important and concerning situation. My boyfriend of three years and I are moving in together for the first time. How can I properly prepare myself for life in a 900 square foot apartment with a man? Oof. Give me any and all weird ticks or things he may do. Thanks. And P.S. I always remind him that he's the second love of my life next to PFT. Ooh. Zaddy. Sup. Who's the real Zaddy? What's up? I'm, that's what they call me. Uh, well, first of all, every guy has a, a mat next to their bed that they jerk off onto. Mm-hmm. And that's where they come. You remember that, guys on chicks? That was an all time weird. Yeah. One. Uh, I would lay down bathroom ground rules the second you move in. There needs to be some communication about cleanliness of the toilet, seat up, seat down, door open, door closed policy when it comes to pooping. And really, you're just going to have to come to terms with the fact that uh, at some point you're going to be in the shower or he's going to be in the shower. And the other person is going to have to take a massive dump and you need to figure out what you're going to do about that ahead of time. Yeah. Um, You're never going to get the remote again. Stop fighting for that. Don't fight because that's like, listen, it's your apartment. You're going to be the one who like even in the bathroom setup, you're going to get 90% of the bathroom. He's going to get 10%, but he also gets the remote. So just remember that. Um, I hope you have a pedestal sink. That's going to be important, too. Yeah, I have all sorts of weird shit that they put up. Also, guys like stickers. So maybe do like a chart, like all the chores he does. Give him a sticker. End of the week, he gets like a prize. Yeah, something like that. I'm with PFD. The one bathroom thing is is. That's the real. That's the real challenge. Yeah, and I should say, I hope you don't have a pedestal sink. Yeah, you. I hope you have the one that's got a lot of counter space on, so you can put your all your weird smelling lotions and stuff. Yeah, he's I'm probably right. go, he's probably gonna have like three things that he keeps in the bathroom: your deodorant, your toothbrush, razor. and maybe a razor. Yeah, and besides that, the rest is yours. I'm actually so in my new house. I haven't moved into in Chicago yet. Uh, his and her bathrooms and. It's there dawned bathrooms. On, yeah, there's two bathrooms. Sheesh. Bath, yeah, um, and it's dawned on me that I now have to clean my own bathroom, and like it's going to be a war zone in there. Mm-hmm. I might put up like a Pink Floyd poster though. Yeah, make it man. <laughs> Just, like have it be my area. <laughs> put carpeting down. Imagine if I put a Pink Floyd poster and like remember those two chicks kissing that everyone had. Yeah. Just fucking. This is the guy zone. Get a TV in there. Yeah, Yeah. I was about to ask you. You have a TV in there? Fucking guy zone. Don't come in here. You should get a TV in front of the toilet and then hook it up to like a Super Nintendo. Yeah. So you can play video games while you poop. It's my fucking area. Make it like an emergency man cave. Yeah. That you can retreat to. This won't be a bathroom at all. (laughs) Like a safety room? (laughs) Yeah. Just Just make it one seat. What do you mean? Like somehow don't even have an option to put the seat up. Oh, yeah. I like that. Yeah. yeah. Urinal. Urinal. Oh, yeah. There's going to be piss all over that seat. <laughs> and I'm going to sit in my piss and I don't care. Hey, Lottery 30s Hank, father of three cat, PF Teeny Weenie, Ooh. and Biker Ooh. Gang Max. You yeah, just got called the baby dicks. Penis is completely <laughs> average. PF Teeny Weenie. That's a new one. Uh, my fiance and I have been together four years. She's so sweet, smart, and I'm so excited to get married. There's Feel just like one problem. Dick out. No. <laughs> we don't <You> want. <laughs> we don't want to have sex at the same time of day. Oh. I like to have sex at night before bed, but he likes to do it in the morning or during the day. When I try at night, he says he's too tired and just a sack. When I asked him why he prefers to have sex during the day, he said it's because he's more focused. Is he insane? Is this going to be a problem forever? Should I cancel our wedding? I feel like. It's probably the, addicted to jerking off. Well, I was going to say, he probably expects to have sex in the morning and afternoon and by like five o'clock. It's kind of like uh, like Stella won't eat her dinner every night until like everyone else is eating because she's like, maybe I'll get some scraps. Maybe he's thinking like, oh, I'm going to have sex in the middle of the day. And then by like five o'clock, he's jerking off. He's like, not going to happen today. And then when you ask him at eight o'clock, he's like already jerked off. Either that or uh, what we're forgetting here is that sports are on at night. 
And so he might just True. Sometimes you got to watch sports. What are you going to say, Max? He also just wakes up with a boner. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's, more that is, yeah, that's the clear answer. Yeah, he might not he even, already has a boner when he yeah. wakes up, so he's like, yes, let's have sex. But he might not even want to have sex. Yeah. He just wakes up and it's like, I have to have yeah. sex. You <laughs> just, and, and here's the thing. Guys are really dumb, so you can you could just train him. I got it. Training a wild horse. You could start having sex. Start having sex every day at 3 o'clock. Then it's 3.15. Then it's 3.30. You keep pushing it back. He'll eventually just, you know, get used to it. I got an idea. You know the TikToks where like the girlfriends wake up the boyfriends at like like two a.m. and pretend it's the morning. Do that, but then have sex with him after at, he goes to at sleep. At like nine p.m. Yeah. Yeah. When he goes to sleep, then just like wake him up, and be like, "Hey, it's the morning." Oh, I like. And that. then be like, hit him with the sex, and then it's like, "Just kidding, it's ten o'clock." Oh, I like that. Or maybe you get you just get six thrusts in the morning, mm -hmm. like it's compromised. Just put it in six times, and then later on you get six more times. Yeah. Have sex twice. Uh, all right. That's crazy. Yeah. How old is this? Guy? <laughs> what I'm, the saying, fuck I'm are saying you with six. About? I'm saying if you got six thrusts, two times a day. Ho, oh. I was, I was, I was making, I was making a here. joke. Yeah, I'm not, saying if you have oh. six thrusts, you you can you can really make those last. You're not in your twenties anymore, Hank. That's yeah. like six. Seven. Two times a day. What are you trying to break a fucking record? How do I convince my 32 year old fiance to stop wearing a Vietnam veteran hat in public? <laughs> Billy, <laughs> he got this hat on a cross country trip to the XFL championship game, and I hate it. He's in his 30s, so no one will believe he's a Vietnam vet. This guy I think rocks. it's still <laughs> weird and borderline disrespectful. My boyfriend, this to summarize, my boyfriend bought a Vietnam veteran hat on a road trip that he took to the XFL championship game. I fucking love this yeah, guy. He claims <laughs> it refers to the vacation we took there last year when he proposed. Is that? And that anyone that gets angry is <laughs> dumb. Is yeah, no, he is. He's a, he's a veteran of Vietnam. He's been there. Wait, That's he proposed yeah, in yeah. Vietnam? Yeah, that that counts. <laughs> That's wild. His life ended in Vietnam. Yeah. <laughs> if put him on the wall. Actually, wearing a World War One veterans hat because none of them are alive. That's cool now. I don't know. <laughs> at, at some, I don't know. Well, Billy, like, you you are kind of a World War One veteran. I've seen the picture yeah, of the last I mean, human to die I in actually, World War One. Yeah, I'm a vampire, and it is Billy. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I, I this guy rocks. You got to keep her. So just thank your lucky stars. I like the guys that wear meme war veteran hats. Ooh, those guys are cool. All right, last two. These are good ones. Uh, my fiance and I are getting married this August. Right around the corner. We need advice on what shoes he should wear for his suit. He's wearing a light gray suit with green tie, pocket square. He thinks he should wear brown shoes. I'm skeptical and think black would look nice too. This is you, yeah, they want you to make the choice. This is a she, she's real the, question. She's right, I guess. We uh, don't know the answer to. Yeah, what, just, what color? No, is that? make it make a choice. We just, wear. You're right. Do we look like suit guys? Light gray, brown or black? Uh, Light gray, brown, brown, brown. It depends. No, brown. indoor or outdoor. Black, brown. brown. Oh, Greg, Jake. my gray suits with black, my blue suits with brown. And everyone says, Ew, look at this guy. Exactly. But you yeah. don't wear pants, Jake. True. I would say if it's outdoors, brown. If it's indoors, black. Gray suit. I'm just going to tell you what the first Google, uh, what color shoes. Just make it match the belt. That's the only rule I know. All right, last one. I recently was just ghosted by a guy who I have mutual friends with. I'm going on a boat party this weekend with that friend group. What is the best way to handle possibly running into him while out on the lake without an escape route? Mm. You can just well, jump off. I would say uh, you got to just in person ghost him. You just got to get so drunk that it doesn't matter. Wait, what's the difference between <laughs> ghosting and curving? Curving, you're telling them. Ghosting, you're just disappearing. I think you got to curve him. You got to curve him on the boat. Or just hook up with his best friend. Boom. Yeah. Problem solved. Okay, that's, it. that's actually what you should do. Yes. Just make out with his best friend on the boat. Yes. You don't even have to like the guy. It's You're on a boat. You're both going to want to smooch. International waters, yeah. Yeah. Doesn't count. All right, great show. Billy, how many friends of yours from your football team do you still keep in touch with? Good amount. Numbers. Six nine. nine. I won I know, 18. I, I, I think won that. Was I think, I won that. I think we, start, we started at the same time, I but I finished PFT. first. I think that was PFT. <sighs> kind of like my love. Yeah. <sighs> All right. So PFT's got 69. <laughs> 17. 21. How did you I, that? I, he's not even mad. He's not he's even not mad. mad. Well, you heard it with Max. He's, he, I Billy, should have. If I was Billy fucking said smart, I should have said 69 gets, of them. If Billy gets Fuck. 69, if Billy said if someone else gets 69 when he can't pick it, he's going to break the machine. I mean, that would be great That's for content. Very, not <laughs> really. Do you guys <laughs> want me to act <laughs> rationally? No. Uh, what? All right, I'll go. What did you, you go? You want me to act rationally? Occasionally. What did you go, no. what? 17. 
right. Uh, no, don't break the machine, please. Wait, don't. You, you guys want me? That no, because we want to sell it. Oh, yeah. Okay, uh, but more pieces, you could 26, sell more pieces. Twenty six. Mm, I had sixty nine. Remember? Yeah, we could sell pieces of the machine. Billy, what's your number? Twenty one. Twenty one. I Meme hope I win still on twenty one. I hope I win on twenty one. Then I'm then I'm actually gonna make you guys pay me. Jake, remind me. I have to decide who we're gonna have pick this. Nine. Nine. Uh, Nine. Nine. Wait, what was that? Remind Nine. me to, to pick someone to build the new machine. Oh, yeah, yeah. This week. Love you guys. Jokic does harness racing in his horse racing. He doesn't actually get on the horses. He's in a little carriage. Mm -hmm. And he gets, like, pulled.